What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, Omni Sensei. Welcome to What If I Was Reborn as Broly, the Scion of Legend, Part 4. Hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Also, remember to check out the original story. Link in the description. Without further ado, let's get into it. For the next month, they had a fixed routine. Every day they would wake up and clean the bedroom. They had breakfast and slowly started their workout afterwards. Broly started his routine with an intense powerlifting workout under 1400x gravity, all in his base form. The girls stayed in the same room, but were barely able to lift their fingers as they were crushed into the ground. Broly forbade them to turn Super Scion, so they suffered under the gravity in their base form while their only objective was to survive. Usually they wouldn't come out unharmed with several broken bones, they almost always needed to take a healing capsule to recover. They could have trained in their own training room as his ship had five. This room and another had the same modifications, while the rest were simple gravity rooms. The weights and the rooms themselves were all made out of the material from the underground base, which enabled them to sustain the harsh conditions inside the rooms. Broly also always wore weights on his ankles and wrists which were each 100 kilograms they just looked like oversized wrist and ankle bands. His green-black armor was around 350 kilograms. It was made with the last cutting-edge technology so it wouldn't obstruct his movements. In all, he looked like he normally did in his armor, just with red weights on his hands and feet. After that powerlifting workout, there would be a lunch break which was the time the girls needed to recover with a healing capsule. Thereafter, they would split up in two groups. If Broly didn't especially ask them to move into the other special room, they would have likely wanted to stay inside his room. Broly found it strange that they were so obsessed to stay with him as long as possible, but he didn't think much about it. Anyway, they went inside their room together while he stayed inside his normal training room. He activated five flying robots and 1,500 times gravity. He dodged their attacks using everything he could, bouncing off the walls or the ground while trying to get closer to them. They were programmed to evade his approaches while attacking him. To successfully complete this workout, he needed to endure at least an hour, and then he had to press a bean-sized button on the back of the robots and turn them all off. After he did that, he activated them again and did the same as before, only with the additional needles that would randomly fly out of the walls. After completing that workout segment, he would turn all the options on making it almost impossible for him to stay in one place longer than a fraction of a second, forcing him into the air. Broly knew that most high-level battles would require abnormal reactions to all kinds of attacks, so he focused a major part of his training to dodge high-frequency attacks coming from all sides. The blades swiping out of the walls were forcing him away from the ground and into the air. This would prove useful for the future as most fights wouldn't happen on the ground but in the air. He also used this to hone his other senses to an unbelievable degree. Key sense would be almost negligible for him in battle, so this would help him to locate his opponent through his other senses. He could also feel his body, reacting on its own to some degree, but Broly knew that this was still light years away from the overpowered Ultra Instinct. This segment of his routine was unpassable for the Broly now and would be unpassable for a long time, as he adjusted the conditions if he realized that it became easier. For example, he would increase the numbers of robots or needle output. There was also the option to increase the reaction of the blades and spears targeting him. The temperature changes weren't as extreme as the high gravity, but it still put heavy burdens on the body and his mental state. It was also for him to let his body adapt to various environmental conditions without losing any battle capabilities. His training regime was harsh to say the least. Most of the time, it was the segment where he would collapse as soon as he gets out of the room with numerous cuts and burns on his body. Of course, if he wanted to, he could just turn Super Scion or even his base plus Ozuru form which he called Ikari to prevent any injuries. But he wanted to push himself to his limits, until the brink of death. He figured that he should train as crazily as ever, now better than later. 
It would be a shame if he naturally grew in power, making the room harmless to him, without exploiting this room to train his movements and experience. It would not be the same if he knew that these things couldn't hurt him, so he put in his all now. After training his strength and movements, it was time to integrate them into his combat style. First the three would take another eating break with the girls taking another healing capsule, before they went inside the room again. Aaliyah and Kana were fighting him alongside two robots, he wasn't allowed to turn off. They trained under 1500x gravity, which burdened Broly heavily. After the whole day of intense workout, he was already beat, and he hadn't taken a healing capsule, but relied on his natural recovery. The girls were also allowed to go mastered Super Scion, while Broly could go Akari to train his mastery in it. This battle would always push him into a corner, where he would try to resist as long as possible. The multiplier of a Super Scion who had completely mastered it was no joke. He estimated that it would multiply their power up to 100x times. If they used the Ascended Super Scion SSJ2, which is two times as strong as Super Scion full power, it would be a 200x multiplier to their base. With his Ikari form, which currently boosts his base eightfold, he was able to hold his ground against the two in their mastered Super Scion plus the robots. If one would convert their base strength at the end of the month into power levels, Aaliyah and Kana would be hovering on the same level, which was around 250 million. Broly was around a 4 billion. When Broly was fighting against their Super Scion as an Ikari, Aaliyah and Kana would hover around 25 billion and he around 32 billion. Broly knew that according to the series, he should be already unrivaled in the universe. But he couldn't help but seriously doubt that. Zongya and Broly himself, they weren't in the main series, but he and she still existed in this universe. What does that mean about the strength of the universe? If Broly only looked at the main anime and manga series, there were rarely strong individuals, to the point that the series even went beyond the universe. Even the movies themselves mostly don't connect to each other. Now with him and Zongya existing together, it meant that it was entirely possible that the other villains and many more experts hidden in the depth of the universe, which weren't integrated in the main story, existed here. With more experts swaggering around the universe, it would be impossible for them to be as weak as stated in the story. Frieza shouldn't even come close to rule a major part of the universe with his meager power level of 120 million. Maybe Frieza could rule a part of the galaxy, but the universe, with all the experts out there, that would just be a wet dream. Even a human could come up with two cyborgs, number 18 and number 17, who could slap this emperor of the universe to death. Of course, that is degrading the genius that is Dr. Jero, but would he be the only one in the entire universe with thousands of civilizations able to come up with a cyborg or android of similar strength? Probably not, which only begs the question, how strong these experts here really are. Every time Broly thought about it, he became more excited. Ha ha ha. The stronger they are, the better. It would be boring otherwise. After they were done with sparring, they would eat again and would spend a few hours meditating. Broly would also examine the two girls' cells and life force for any hidden damages and help them fix it if they had any. For the night, they would shower or bath together, which sometimes led to a sweaty and steamy battle in the bedroom, but usually they would not even bother to move out of the bathroom and get right into the action. After a month of this hellish training, they finally arrived at the coordinates given by the city lord. They slowed down and observed the seemingly empty space. From the data Broly got, they had to be careful not to fly right into the barrier, destroying their ship. Broly quickly took on his battle armor and a mouthpiece meant for breathing. Broly could use his life force and key to replace the basic needs for his body, but if he could use a simple mouthpiece to breath, why would he waste his life force for something like this? Dressed up, he was ready to move out. Broly flew a bit away from the spaceship. He charged up a key sphere in his hand and threw it forward. After a couple of seconds of it crossing the empty space like a shooting star, it collided with something and a gigantic explosion dispersed the empty and filled it with bright light and scorching heat. It looked like a massive dying sun as it slowly faded away. Broly saw his attack distorting space and at the place where his attack collided with something, he only saw a black -a wall. He was only able to see it as the energy unnaturally dispersed to the side instead of evenly in all directions. The wall seemed to span endlessly, but from the information he got, it only covered a solar system. 
He couldn't help but marvel at the expense the Kais took to seal this group of pirates away. The seal was being sustained by their planets. This would mean they used several planets just to seal them away. Broly thought it was stupid that they put so much effort into the seal, but it was easily broken if one planet that was part of the seal was destroyed. It is not like just anybody can reach their planet, as it was located in the other world, only friends or the dead would know their exact location. Well, they probably didn't think a friend would teleport a bomb towards one of them and blew himself and the planet up. He stopped pondering over this and started transforming. An abnormal amount of ki was being released as his body grew, and his hair changed spiky green. He was surrounded by a green flame-like aura as he gazed at the wall with his yellow eyes. The space distorted around him as green lightning popped into existing. The ship behind him was heavily wobbling and trembling. It looked like a boat caught in a storm out in the ocean. Quick! Measure his power level! Kana shouted as he saw Broly transform. Already on it! The numbers on the screen started rising until it stopped at 2400 energy level, EL, which would be 2 trillion and 400 billion calculated into power level. 1 EL equals 1 billion PL. Considering that Broly's base was a 4 billion, it would mean that in his legendary Super Scion plus Akari, he was 600x times stronger. Aaliyah and Kana were shocked, since they could only feel that he was vastly stronger, but by how much they previously had no clue. Now presented with the numbers, they knew that even if they were as strong as Broly in their base, they would still be absolutely demolished by him. They also remembered hearing Broly say that his legendary state was not at its limit yet, which would mean that it would amplify his strength even further in the future. This also confused them since Broly said that his Ikari multiplies his strength by 8, which would mean that his legendary transformation only multiplies by 75x. Broly of course didn't know that he shocked and confused the two behind him, as he focused a massive amount of ki inside his hand. His hand started glowing in a green hue. With his other hand, he seemed to grab the energy and pull it out. Solid green key emerged out of his hand as he pulled the energy out until it reached three meters in length. In his hand was a green spear with a cross-shaped tip that crackled like lightning and distorted space by mere existing. Broly put his hand holding the spear behind his head as he went into a throwing position. His green flame-like aura crawled over his arm into the spear. The spearhead started shining in a green light. Broly took a deep breath as he still focused his energy into the spear. Thunder Spear. Why was it called Thunder Spear? Because of the boom it made when thrown. With an explosion, the spear teared through space as it headed towards the wall. A seemingly solid green line was left behind from the spear as it flew with an unbelievable and unstoppable pace. Not even Broly could follow the spear, as it was too fast for him to grasp. A technique he developed on his journey after seeing a comet pierce through a mountainside. At that moment, he thought about creating a technique that could pierce through anything. It was his strongest hitting move he had created to this date. He believed that even the gods wouldn't want to meet it head on. Of course, he hasn't experienced the might of the god of destruction yet, but he was still confident in this technique. The only thing that happened after he fired his spear was the barrier shattering into countless bits from the point where the path of light collided with it. The moment of collision between spear and barrier was not noticed by them, as the spear didn't slow down at all in the face of the barrier, making the piercing moment impossible for them to see. The barrier slowly vanished into nothingness and revealed the sight behind it. A singular star system with five planets devoid of life. One of them had a gigantic hole right in the middle, breaking the planet into pieces. A green line still lingered around as it pierced through the broken planet's middle and beyond with no end in sight. Oh crap! Please don't be Zongya's planet! Please don't be Zongya's planet! He had severely overestimated the barrier and underestimated his technique. It was, after all, his first time firing it at full strength. Aaliyah and Kana stepped outside with a breathing mouthpiece each and activated the cloaking function of the ship. It seemingly vanished from the place, but was just undetectable for the naked eye. The three then flew towards the broken planet. Although Broly doubted that a corpse would remain if he had really hit the person inside the planet, it wouldn't hurt to see. Maybe they weren't located inside like the city lord proclaimed but somewhere on it. At a closer range, 
He looked over the debris with his life force vision on. But even after a while, he couldn't find any signals of a single living creature on this wasteland of a planet. Whoever was on this planet was instantly killed and pulverized by his attack. Well, this makes a friendly approach much more difficulty. Broly smiled bitterly. Why do you always have to escalate things? Aaliyah complained. Cough. Only this once I did an oopsie. Next time I won't go all out. On another note, as I observed you in your legendary state, does your dong grow too in your transformation? Kana said with slight anticipation in her voice. Eh? I think so. Awkwardly admitted. Of course, that was one of the first thing he checked when he transformed. What if it expanded too much, hurting his member? But it didn't seem to cause any trouble. He, Kana grinned lewdly and even drooled a bit as she looked at him or rather his crotch. Broly felt awkward being stared at her. Even though it wasn't the first time, he quickly reverted to his base form. Let's just hope I didn't kill her. Sigh. In the other world, in four different planets, in four different cardinal directions, the same thing happened on all of them. The whole planet started trembling. It was a worldwide earthquake that shook the planet. After a few minutes, the planet stopped shaking, returning to the peace they had previously. These, of course, were the planets of the Kais. One of the planets was particularly affected as it was the smallest and the weakest link of the seal, which caused the earthquake to be much more severe. The North Kai was obviously startled by the sudden earthquake and panicked as he ran through his house trying to stop everything from breaking. Bubbles the monkey and the grasshopper Gregory were holding each other as they waited for the earthquake to calm down. Wow, what was that? No matter how long they waited afterwards, the earthquake didn't return, and North Kai pondered hard about what could have happened, as it was impossible for his planet to cause an earthquake. After a while, his face became gloomy. There can only be one thing that could cause something like this to happen. Could it be? Did he somehow manage to escape? He went out of his house onto the grass. With his arms behind his back, his antennae started twitching as he searched through the place of his memory. Oh no! The seal is broken. He pried further and looked onto the planets, which turned his expression into a grimace. They managed to break free. This is bad. This universe is doomed. With those around there will be only mayhem. Wait, who are those? He looked at a broken planet and found three scions standing and quarreling with each other on some debris of a destroyed planet. What are those damn scions doing there? I thought they were all killed by Frisia. He started observing them and tried to get a good look at their face until one of them suddenly turned around with piercing yellow eyes. North Kai frightened retracted his senses. Did he notice me? He shuddered at the thought that someone can sense his prying. I have to give notice to the Galactic King of the Milky Way. Maybe he has someone in his ranks that could deal with them. Even though I highly doubt that. Is something wrong, Broly? Aaliyah asked concernedly as she saw Broly turn around abruptly and turn into his Ikari form. HM? Nothing. Must have been wind. The wind? This planet's atmosphere is long gone. Cough. Anyway, let's go to the other planets. They started to fly into space again. They headed towards the biggest planet. On their way, they saw three figures flying from their respective planets towards the biggest one in the solar system they were heading to as well. They looked at each other and quickly accelerated. A short moment later, they arrived and hovered in the sky as they looked down. The three were waiting for a figure who climbed out of the ground. The scions slowly landed a few tens of meters away of them while being watched by the other group. Who are you? The tallest of them said. This was evidently Bojack. A muscular build with bluish colored skin, long orange hair, a scar across his face and 2.2 meters tall, which about the same height as Broly's base. We are here to pick you up, Broly said with a neutral face. Pick us up? Ha ha ha. Didn't know we had Scion admirers, the dash we are not admirers. Come, let's not waste time and go. Admirer? Me? In your dreams? Who do you think you are? You think you can just interrupt Bojack, the future emperor of this universe? Bujin, the smallest of them with a turban on his head, flared out. Broly only looked at him like he was an idiot. Seeing this, Bujin wanted to attack him but was quickly stopped by Bojack. We still have to wait for our comrade Kogu. He should arrive dash. 
Broly had a bitter smile on his face. There were some mishaps and he unfortunately died. But he died an honorable death. Broly blatantly lied. You! Eugene, who was on edge from before, finally lost it and shot towards Broly. Bojack didn't stop him this time. He was first apprehensive, as they were seemingly the ones who could break the seal that held them for hundreds of years. They shouldn't be weak, but now they already killed one of them. Although he didn't care much about Kogu, it was too humiliating to be interrupted twice while being casually told that he had disposed someone of his race. How could he endure this humiliation? He would not rest until he toyed these arrogant scions to death. Bojack signaled the others to follow Bujin. Bujin unleashed a fiery sequence of punches, but he couldn't hit Broly at all. How is this possible? He quickly distanced himself and released his psycho threads. Broly didn't move at all as he observed this familiar technique. Before it could reach Broly, Bujin was forced away by a key blast from Malia. Zongya and Baido, another member with a mohawk hairstyle, redirected their attacks towards Kana and Aaliyah. Bujin somehow felt that he wouldn't stand a chance against the giant scion. So he joined the others in attacking the females. Bojack had a sneer on his face. So what? You may have broken the barrier, but you are still no match against this mighty Hera. Bojack firmly believed that there was no other race that could compete with them, especially the so-called warrior race, Scions. He accelerated and dashed straight at Broly and threw a punch. Broly easily evaded it by tilting his head. Bojack quickly followed with rapid punches and kicks, but Broly was just like a wind in the leaf, completely evading every attack of his. Bojack distanced himself and his key started to rise. His blue jacket was torn apart by the sudden expansion of muscles. His skin turned green and his hair red. He transformed like the city lord. Surprisingly, it wasn't only a multiplier of 3x but 5x times, which didn't impress Broly at all after the initial surprise that it was higher than the city lords. Maybe it has something to do with his age? He is after all pretty old, it would be no surprise if his battle capabilities decreased with age. Could also be that he just isn't as bodily able like Bojack, after all, he likes to study more than to train. Seeing Broly completely unfazed and seemingly thinking about something else, while they were fighting, pissed him off. You bastard! He rushed at Broly. After transforming, he wasn't faster by much, but his strength increased massively. It was still futile as he was unable to hit Broly. Broly estimated that Bojack's power level after transforming should be around 8.5 billion, which surprised him a bit. After all, Bojack should be around Perfect Cell's level, which would mean that Super Perfect Cell should be around 15 plus billion. Aaliyah and Kana are only over three times stronger than Cell as a Super Scion too. Seems like I have to take the training up a notch. After the increase of strength, he first wanted to go Akari, but after seeing his speed unable to perform at the power he showed, he thought about toying with him a bit. With just skill and instincts alone, he was evading almost every attack of Bojack. He only needed to block on occasion, which pleased Broly quite a bit. He was fighting someone who was over two times stronger than him, and the opponent was helplessly unable to cross the gap in skill. Although the speed wasn't on par with Bojack's strength, it was still faster than Broly's base form. Bojack put all his weight into one of his punch as he saw the opportunity to land a blow directly on Broly's face. Suddenly the face tilted, evading the blow in the last moment and suddenly approach him. A Bojack was sent flying into a rock formation, destroying it in his path and burying him underneath. Broly waited, not taking a single step until light shone between the cracks of the stones, before a shockwave flung them away. Ah! Bojack was breathing heavily as he pressed his hand on his stomach. His skin was torn open and bled at the spot where Broly landed his punch. You! Suddenly a figure intercepted their sight. The figure heavily crashed into the ground between them, breaking open the ground. The figure was Zongya. She slowly stood up while trembling and stepping backwards. She already had numerous cuts and bruises on her body. She obviously was brutally beaten up. Bojack stretched out his arms to the side, and green energy gathered in his hands. Galactic Buster! Completely ignoring her figure in his path, he flung his two energy spheres. 
Broly squinted his eyes slightly as his body instantly buffed up and his eyes turned yellow. He disappeared from his spot, only to re-emerge between the energy attack and the shocked Zongya. With a flick of his wrist, both spheres were deflected into space. Bojack didn't wait as he followed up with a punch. Seeing this, Broly became annoyed. He first wanted to beat them down so they could have a more peaceful conversation afterwards. After all, he would have to take them inside his ship, so he needed to display his superior strength and for pirates like them a bit of force to humble them was needed. They would easier listen to reason afterwards. But now, even after seeing the disparity in skill and strength, Bojack persisted. There is no room in my ship for an idiot like you. Broly thought as killing intent surfaced in his eyes. He just waited for the punch to reach his face. Bojack was about to rejoice seeing Broly not evade his punch. He used his energy attack as a distraction, but focused most of his strength into his fist. If it landed it would be the end of this scion. Ha ha ha! Die! His fist landed on Broly's face and made a wonderful cracking sound. It took a second before the pain was transmitted to his brain. Bojack's hand was completely shattered. He was wincing in pain until he was picked up by the throat. He saw Broly pointing his other palm at him, and a green sphere emerged in it. Mercy, I didn't have dash, before he could say anything else. Broly pressed the sphere against Bojack's chest. Bojack was pushed into the sky by the sphere before it illuminated the sky with a gigantic explosion. Bojack was instantly pulverized never to be seen again. Zongya had a shocked expression until she sensed two people flying towards her from behind. She quickly turned around and saw those devilish super scions that decimated her group. Oh, you already done? The scion who saved her turned around as he spoke towards the female scions. All dead. I don't see them comply, especially when they are gathered. Aaliyah casually spoke. Didn't know you were this ruthless, Broly said seemingly astounded. Aaliyah only rolled her eyes. I am a scion and was badly influenced by my sparring partner. Besides those were pirate scum. No good in keeping them alive. What should we do with her? Aaliyah looked at Zongya with indifferent eyes. She always gave that look to people he didn't like or were just strangers. Kana on the other hand had always kind eyes, but when mixed with dislike, she looked scarier than someone with killing intent. These gazes were thrown at the wounded girl. She lost her strength and shrank to the ground from their glares. She didn't know if it wouldn't have been better to die a moment ago. What cruel fate would await her with these people who obviously didn't like her? Broly came closer. He was a bit buffer in his Ikari from and his eyes scared her as they seemed to pierce one's body. He squatted down and slowly spoke in a deep, booming voice. You will behave right? She frustrated bit her lips as she stared at the one who questioned her and was seemingly the leader of the group. She felt helpless in front of these people. She would have never imagined that someone as strong and beautiful like her would be degraded to a slave. She obviously misunderstood their intentions, since they didn't really explain anything. In the end, she reluctantly nodded. A figure was lying on a bed contemplating her life. It has been a month since she was kidnapped by these lunatics. They had explained to her that they came for her. It was a request from her uncle to pick her up, which explained why they didn't hesitate to slaughter the others of her group. Her uncle always said to her that they were bad company. She sighed at the thought that her conquest was foiled before it started. She was the second strongest in the group, but she wasn't satisfied with that position. She wanted to rule, not be second to that murderous jackass named Bojack. She couldn't deny that Bojack was several times stronger than her. That was why she was loyal to him. In the beginning, she wanted to use his strength to kill the competition. She thought that since Bojack saw their race superior to every other race, she could just use her body to seduce him. Unfortunately, Bojack enjoyed snapping someone's neck more than everything else. It didn't really matter to her anymore, since Bojack was easily disposed of. The Scions picked her up and healed her. She also saw Broly checking her out, which gave rise to the thoughts to seduce him. But these thoughts were quickly killed before they could sprout. Why? Because of the sounds that kept her up at night. It was unbelievable how long they were going and how loud they became. By then she knew that she would only be one of many as she could hardly kill the competition as they were far stronger than her. 
Besides, why would she degrade herself if she couldn't get any benefits from it? Additionally, the glares of the two female scions made it clear that she wouldn't have a pleasant time if she made a move. She thought that if she couldn't make a move, she at least shouldn't endure the sounds they made. At one time she screamed at them through the wall to shut up, but Broly just laughed. Aaliyah muffled her moans a bit and Kana shamelessly kept going. After a month, she already was able to tell the difference between the two, which she wasn't proud of at all. Zongya was only able to sleep with earplugs while being buried under blanket and pillow and accepted her fate. The only positive was that they were nice, if one ignored the cold stares of the two females. Broly also didn't force himself onto her or showed any interest after the initial size up, even though he kept going with the other two without stop, which weirdly frustrated her. The only thing they forced her to do was to participate in their training. They said that she needed to become stronger so they don't have to protect her later on. Protect her? In the whole galaxy there would hardly be anyone that could even approach her strength. She started telling them how easily she could decimate hundreds of groups and that she already did before she was sealed away. How she dealt with frost demons but instead of the awe she would usually get, they just shut her up disinterested. She wanted to argue how incredible her tales are when she remembered that she was easily beaten up by them. Surprisingly, the training had good results. In the past, she would normally never train except for coordination, as their race was just naturally strong, and it was just too sweaty and straining. She also thought that the constant battles as a pirate was training enough, but she remembered that they always attacked rather weak groups with the exception of a few times, she would hail as grand tails. Now being forced to train, she rapidly grew in strength. She was always pushed to the extreme by them and by the room itself. She would have died numerous times if it weren't for these healing capsules they got. They also taught her some things about key control and let her have access to their library. They said that her uncle gifted it to them so she would be able to learn anyway if she went to her uncle and requested it later. Either way, it didn't matter to them. They would usually take time to read on the techniques together and discuss them. It would take a few years until they would be through the whole library. Broly said that although some are exceptional techniques, she should focus on making a technique of her own with the knowledge she gained. He also added to become vastly stronger so it would better his training which pissed Aaliyah and Kana off and they directly turned into the next level they called Super Scion 2. She thought that the name was a bit uncreative, but the strength of that transformation was no joke. They got twice as strong as their normal Super Scion after taking that form. It forced Broly to go non-full power Super Scion, which shocked her greatly. After thinking a bit, it was stupid for her to assume that he couldn't transform. After asking they said that Broly could transform into something that was stronger than Super Scion 2. Broly surprisingly explained his forms to her. The yellow eyes were called Ikari, which multiplies his power by 8. Next was non-full power Super Scion, which was the same as a normal mastered Super Scion, a 100x multiplier. He said that he could stack Ikari on top, but with the increase in strength through Super Scion, his return through Ikari would diminish. As a non-full power Super Scion, his Ikari only multiplied it by 3x, which would result in a stacked 300x multiplier. His legendary Super Scion, or just legendary state, Broly referred it to, was a 400x plus a 1.5x multiplier from Ikari, resulting in 600x times his base. She was utterly shocked at this revelation. Someone who could fight on even ground with her former boss Bojack and kill him with his first transformation was able to become 75x times stronger than that. She was baffled. Wouldn't he be able to easily conquer the universe? Not to mention him but his girlfriends were exceptional strong as well and from their conversations, she could gather that there were at least two more super scions who should be close to the female strength. Took a while to accept this fact. But she couldn't complain about their enormous strength after she saw their extreme training regime. Every other person would have died already even with their healing capsules. It showed their mental state and that they put serious efforts into becoming stronger, which in the first time in her life motivated her to train to her limits as well. Although she was naturally stronger and grew stronger rapidly, she still lost out to the science and their strange physique. She also polished her transformation. In contrast to the bulkier male transformation, the females would still be lean but with dense muscles. For the next two years they trained together without stop, until they landed on another planet. With an additional person, 
they wanted to stock up on more supplies. In the beginning they were on guard with her, especially Aaliyah and Kana. Zongya obviously knew why, but after showing no intention to seduce their man, they had quickly warmed up with her. Zongya realized that although they were battle maniacs, they were very nice to her and she genuinely enjoyed their stupid conversations, even though she was constantly teased by Kana, which annoyed her a bit, but overall this was nowhere near as bad as she had initially dreaded. Rather it could be said it felt like a nice vacation. This group was much more enjoyable than her previous one. It was nice to have other females around, instead of a boss that disregarded her and three others who would goggle at her the whole time. It softened Zongya a bit that they started considering her a friend. She unknowingly slowly accepted to be part of this group. Coupled with the strength the science displayed, it showed how unrealistic her past dream to conquer the universe with her strength was. But this only gave her a new goal, to chase after them. They landed on an orange planet with life on it. There was a civilization on it, but they were rather primitive. Thankfully there were plenty of beasts they could kill for food, the water was good as well. They would only have to filter it once to make it drinkable. Of course, with their powerful bodies, they would hardly catch any illnesses or diseases, but they filtered it anyway to give it a cleaner feeling. Broly had scanned the planet with their ship scouter, only to find several individuals with a battle power of 5,000, which was impressive for such a remote planet. He quickly approached them only to see a village. Broly grinned at the sight. Zongya had already put the pump into the water and had nothing to do anymore. As she saw Broly flying towards the distance, she quickly followed him. She saw him stare at a village. Do you want to kill them? What? No. We don't that here. Just wanted to take a look at the aboriginals. Take a look? Why? They are just low-level creatures with barely any strength. As soon as she said that Broly flicked her forehead and waved his finger in her face. No, no, no. Even weak creatures like them can get abnormal strong and never underestimate someone just because our scouter says they have a low power level. After all the time you spend with us, you should know that one can suppress one's power. Sigh. Broly sighed disappointedly. Even though it was obviously faked, it still irritated her. So, you expect some experts here? Zongya rolled her eyes as she asked. HM? No, I don't, as if there were any strong creatures on this backward planet. I just wanted to brag a bit. A vein popped after hearing that, but she quickly calmed down and inquired further. Brag? About what? Of course, of how strong I am. I want to see them despair when they realize they stand no chance against me. Why? She was confused. Why would someone like him feel the need to brag to some aboriginals about his strength? One can probably count the people who can match him in strength on one hand. Of course, that was not the opinion Broly had on the experts of the universe. Because it is fun. He quickly landed in the middle of what appeared to be the market. She looked at the spectacle from above. He was speaking to them, of course they couldn't understand anything he said. He fired a key blast on empty area which resulted in them panicking. Next, what appears to be the tribe's chief, came out and dashed towards Broly and just punched out, unleashing numerous attacks only to find it ineffective against Broly, who just took the attacks head-on without flinching. He slapped the chief away. Considering the difference in power, Zongya couldn't understand why Broly started laughing at their dejected and terrified faces. He then flew to another tribe, but this time assumed an almighty being who came to teach them, Zongya figured. She knew that only because she saw him draw out key meditation methods. Although there was still a barrier of language, the strongest out of the group seemed to understand and kneel down to Broly like he was a god. He again flew to another tribe and acted out another scene. A hero, a thief, a bandit, a lost person, a beggar. Obviously Broly didn't go around this planet and acted out these scenarios because it was fun. Zongya approached him and asked again why he did that. Broly gave her a look before he started to explain. I am acting. Acting? What do you need acting for? Zongya was even more puzzled now. Broly laughed at her confused face. Because I want to be a villain and give some motivation. After saying that he turned around and headed to their ship. Zongya pondered about his reasoning, but she couldn't get anything out of it. To be a villain, to give motivation? Are there some heroes he wants to push? The Galactic Patrol? 
As she was pondering about it, her thoughts took a strange turn. Am I a villain? She couldn't help but realize that considered to this group, she was more villainous. Although she saw the three as devilish creatures in the beginning, she realized they were good people. They didn't go around and exterminate civilization or kill without reason like she did in the past. Of course, she hadn't spent much time with them, but this is how she perceived them. She, on the other hand, after her race and her planet was exterminated, she only wanted to stand on the top of this universe. She unleashed her anger on the races of the universes and exterminated them. She only bullied the weak, while she never thought about the consequences her actions caused. In a way, no, I am a villain. Suddenly someone patted on her shoulder. She turned her head and saw Broly smiling at her. What are you thinking about? Broly looked at her, seemingly trying to pry into her mind. I, nothing. Do you want me to stop bully them? Broly asked her in a teasing manner. Zongya furrowed her eyebrows. In her eyes, this wasn't even considered bullying. He just pulled some stupid axe with them, but of course she wouldn't say that. No. I, it's nothing. It was only unnoticeable. But her eyes had a glint of guilt in them. Broly, who was unbelievable perceptive, saw this. You were scum. Zongya widened her eyes in shock. But more than shock, she felt sad for how Broly saw her. She wanted to fly away but was holed into place by him. You know your uncle is a really good man, a hero. He took in countless people from different races into his city and protected them from a murderous race. He didn't ask for anything in return and even offered to guide the next generation of the other races. He even almost lost his life by protecting my and many other races. You, on the other hand, did what you wanted to do, killed and probably wiped out races. She gritted her teeth in frustration but couldn't rebuke him in any way. She endured it in silence. But you have changed tremendously in the short time you were with us. You have softened up. Although we only forced you to train with us and chatted in the breaks with each other, you took this time to improve yourself and your attitude. It didn't even take long for you to become friends with the others. From what I can see, you are no scum anymore. You know, your uncle said that after you became more powerful, you became more arrogant and started terrorizing the Milky Way galaxy. It seems he was right. It only took a slap over your head and a different company to humble yourself. Maybe in the future you will be a villain again or a hero like your uncle. If you feel guilty about what you did in the past, there are plenty of opportunities to redeem yourself in the future. But if you don't want to, then don't. Zongya now became confused. Didn't he want to tell her to do her best to be a hero? There are rarely true heroes that would give their lives for their righteous cause. Aaliyah and Kana are nice girls and wouldn't create trouble for trivial things, but to their enemies they are monsters and considered villains. I, on the other hand, would kill everyone who would disrespect me or get on my nerves. We aren't heroes, just a few battle-crazed scions who like each other. If you want to be a hero to redeem yourself, want to kill every living being in sight or just live your life, go ahead. We won't dictate what kind of person you want to become. No matter what person you become, if we get along, we are cool. Besides, we are only here to take you to your uncle. All right, enough talking, let's get inside. I want to get off this planet. Broly left the stunned Zongya standing outside while he went inside the ship. Zongya was touched but started to think about what he was trying to say and suddenly started laughing. Basically, no one is perfect and I don't care what kind of person you want to become. Don't get on my nerves and I won't kill you, huh? Interesting, although you said all that, it is not how you really feel, right? If I just randomly killed people on this planet, you would have probably stopped me. He just wants me to show my true face and my views on life and decide over me afterwards. Didn't think you were the kind who manipulates someone with your words. Good, finally a leader with some brain. Alright, if you want to see my true self, I won't hide anything. Become the judge if we get along. Indeed, Broly could feel that although she opened up a lot to them, she was still on guard. He really only cared if he would get along with someone. He himself was doing whatever he wanted to do, but he still had a moral compass. Though his moral was twisted a bit after being reborn into this universe or rather his sadistic nature and the love for battles came to surface, he still didn't love to cause or see mayhem. If Zongya was just an unreasonable, murderous bastard, he wouldn't hesitate to end her. 
He already knew that Zhang Yao was clever through their conversations and would recognize what he meant. If he realized that she was still hiding after what he said, it would also tell him something. This was a test not for her to become a hero but if Broly could get along with her and if she survives until she was delivered to her uncle. They again started their journey through space. Nothing really changed in their routine except for the increased configurations on the panels and the dynamic between the three. Kana, could you be more considerate at night? Someone on here wants to sleep after her shower. Oh, did I disturb your sleep? I am so sorry. Kana apologized. Yes, you did. And don't you think you're a bit exaggerating? There is no way your moans are real. Humph. I didn't think for a second you would understand something like this old virgin hag. You. Who are you calling hag? You horny ho. Zongya retorted angrily. Oh, so virgin is correct? Broly smiled bitterly at the sight. Suddenly, two arms hugged around his neck from behind and Aaliyah whispered to him. She doesn't mince her words anymore. Yeah, I know. She became really feisty with Kana after our stop. Maybe I shouldn't have encouraged her to open up. Well, I think it was the best thing you could have done. She doesn't have to hold back anymore. Although they are quarreling, she seems happier now. Broly slowly stroke Aaliyah's hand while inwardly agreeing to her words. In the next three years on their journey, the four have been training diligently. Every year they would land on a planet to resupply. Their bodies needed more energy after becoming stronger, so they had to stop on a planet to get more food. Although they could also get on without food and rely on their energy. But that was too exhausting and Scions loved their food. It was also their time to get out and see different things other than the inner walls of the ship. Zhangya was already considered as one of theirs. Kana and her especially became good friends, although or maybe because they used to quarrel all the time. After constant training they were maxing out on the settings of the rooms. It had been only five years since they started training with it and now it became easier every day. Of course, the effort they took was not small at all. They were constantly on the verge of death and pushed their bodies to their utmost limits. With Broly and his control over life force hidden injuries were almost impossible. Talking about life force, Broly's growth in it was tremendous. He gained tremendously with his training. His best gains were with the life force pearl. For a long time, it wasn't affected by his efforts. It wasn't affected until his strength increased and became more proficient with his key. He was able to move it with massive amount of key and it also slowly broke the pearl down. He moved it into the place where his key generated, which took him a few months to do so, but after he was done, the pearl was automatically being corroded by the key. By doing this, he was able to give his key life force properties. His key was able to strengthen his cells, making it unnecessary to use the life force he generated. With the surplus of life force, he could either use it to further strengthen his cells or use it for attacks and for healing purposes. Usually, he would gather his life force into a single point to create a pearl of his own. The pearl he was corroding was built with the foundation of someone else's pearl and he was unfamiliar with its exact structure, so he thought about beginning from zero. While the pearl broke down inside, he would observe its structure and try to learn from it. He also realized that the life force of the pearl that came from the black sun, he absorbed, was not as easy to be manipulated as his own. His own life force was still the best to use techniques with and with the already existing pearl he would use it to strengthen his body step by step. He would store his life force in a single point trying to create a pearl and if he needed it, he could just use this pearl as a reserve for anything he wanted. There wasn't the problem that he couldn't move it easily. His own life force would listen to him even when it was almost solid. Now with this surplus he started to inject it in his other techniques so they could be strengthened by it, but he quickly realized the problem with this method. The life force was exceptional on its own like the Jankadama but mixed with Ki it didn't support the techniques at all, making it unnecessary to combine them. He instead picked up a project he had on hold for a long time. Burning life force. By burning it, he could boost the strength of his body tremendously, but this wasn't easy to sustain. At the beginning, even when he saved a few months of life force, it would be uncontrollably burn up in just a few seconds. Although his strength would rise tremendously, afterwards his body would go into a weakened state and with the short burst, it would be almost impossible to fight with it. It was only useful as his final attack. But this didn't stop him from analyzing the process and try to optimize its effect. After one year and seven months of optimizing it, he came up with the perfect balance of strength and the amount of life force he could use. If he only used the life force he generated, he could sustain it endlessly, but it would only boost his strength by 1%.
If he used his saved life force of a month and burn it with the highest cost effect return, he could boost himself 10x for 2 minutes. 2 minutes couldn't be underestimated in high-end battles. Broly was very satisfied with the result and from then on, he saved his life force for a year, which would sustain him for 24 minutes, which would be long enough to finish a fight. Of course, there was the option to burn it at faster rate which would boost his strength more but the load on his body and the rate his life force was being burned was increased exponential. He also has finally mastered his legendary state completely and his multiplier reached 450x in the end, which was 2.25 times higher than a transformation into Super Scion 2. Of course, it couldn't hold its own against someone of the same base strength plus Super Scion 3. According to the series, it was 4x times as strong as Super Scion 2 which would mean it was an 800x times multiplier to one's base. Broly couldn't help but grin at the thought. If he used his Akari on top of his mastered legendary state, he would be already close to Super Scion 3 with a multiplier of 675x times his base. He was still in his first normal Super Scion and with new transformations his strength would be immeasurable. In the three years of training he didn't manage to improve a lot with his Akari, but still with his mastery of Ozuru, his experience with Akari and his mastery over his legendary state, he thought that he should be able to go legendary Super Scion 4, but he was hesitating. A feeling told him that he was missing something and that it wouldn't end good for him if he tried it anyway. He listened to this feeling and decided to put it on hold for now. He decided to improve his Akari and reach the other Super Scion transformations before he tackled Super Scion 4. He knew that he could theoretically skip Super Scion 2 and 3 as they were only deviants from the original Super Scion, but it would boost his understanding and mastery of Super Scion and he believed this weird feeling would at least vanish by then. In the future he would concentrate more on the transformations, because he couldn't improve his body by much anymore or rather the gains weren't worth the time he invested. After Broly had reached the limits of gravity and the other technologies to train him, his progress through training slowed down tremendously at 20 billion. The others could still go on in their base form and it would last them till they reached Broly's level now. Obviously, he was not the only one who improved. Although Aaliyah and Kana were becoming stronger as well, they were nowhere near to the next level of Super Scion, but they had reached 600 million in their base by now. Zhangya had made tremendous progress. Now her transformation boosted her 10x times instead of the original 3x and her base strength increased rapidly as well. It had reached 3 billion compared to her original 700 million, the increase was a lot, to say the least. They were happy to see their strength improve so fast. On the other hand, Broly of course was dissatisfied with his slowed down progress but his mood had improved after seeing the blue planet in the window. According to the map, the next origin crystal awaited him there. The origin's energy crystal, what abilities would he gain from it? He couldn't help but want to quickly find out. Of course, there was the possibility that he wouldn't gain any ability at all, but it would be beneficial no matter what. On Perdidus they used normal energy crystals to feed the Tree of Might, which should mean that inside was life force, but the origin's blood crystal already kept life force inside, so it had to be another potent energy source, which the tree could absorb. He was getting excited to find out what it was. Broly dressed up in his battle armor with the green fur and stepped outside with a mouthpiece. He quickly accelerated towards the planet. The others stepped outside and secured their ship before following Broly. They quickly arrived and landed on an ice block. To be exact, the whole planet was frozen and there was no place which wasn't covered in ice, but Broly didn't care about that. He used his life force vision and senses to see if there were any other creatures on it. He thought that if creatures lived here, they would know of the crystal or at least give him some clues. He quickly orbited the planet and skimmed over it with his senses until he found a faint signal. He almost missed it, since the life force was deep inside the planet. Without hesitation, he crashed through the millennia-old ice for kilometers in depth. After a minute of penetrating the planet, he arrived in a small cave. In the center of the cave, a purple crystal was embedded into the ground. The crystal was the thing that contained the life force. He scanned the purpled crystal and could see something trapped inside. The crystal was rhythmically pulsating like a heart. Aaliyah, Kana, and Zhangya landed beside him shortly after. They looked at each other and quietly asked if this was the origin crystal. Broly furrowed his eyebrows. No, I don't think so. It is something else. He suddenly outstretched his arm and a shining green key blade formed around his hand. He approached the crystal and chopped down on top of it. It went in for a few centimeters before stopping. It not only stopped, but slowly pushed the keyblade outside. Oh! Broly grinned. His muscles instantly expanded a bit, his hair rose, and his eye color changed into yellow. Without waiting for a second further, he applied more strength into his arm and cut right through the crystal. Crack! The crystal instantly broke into two halves, falling to one side. 
respectively. A body dropped to the ground. It was slightly trembling, and its breath was shallow. The two scions waited for Broly to help, attack to just do something, but he only looked at it with interest in his eyes. The girls didn't know what race this creature was. Only Zongya knew, since she had killed a few of them in the past. It is a frost demon. Frost demon? Aliyah and Kana were shocked, especially Kana, as she had already seen Frisia and Cold, but they didn't look like this. Yes, a frost demon in his final form. This one seems from another family than Frisia's, as he has bluish skin and these crystal-like things on his head, and in the middle of his chest are blue as well. He looks like Frost from Universe 6. Of course, Broly didn't say that out loud. He looked at Kana and was astonished that she didn't show any reaction to the revelation other than being surprised. Kana noticed Broly staring at her and smiled at him. He approached her and embraced her. Don't. It's embarrassing. Kana mumbled as she buried her head in Broly's chest. You? Embarrassed? That's new. You don't want to kill it? Broly asked her. I don't care about it. I may have been obsessed with revenge in the past, but now I have found someone to love. I don't need revenge to be happy. She looked up into Broly's eyes. His heart skipped a beat as he returned the gaze. He couldn't help but tighten his hug and lean in for a kiss. They made out for a few minutes, completely forgetting their surrounding, until a cough pushed away the pink atmosphere in the air. Cough. He is waking up. Zongya's ears had a red hue as she pointed at the frost demon. Aaliyah only giggled from the side. Kana, unlike her usual boldness, became quiet and shy as she blushed and stole glances at Broly. Broly approached the frost demon and picked it up before leaning it against the wall. The frost demon had opened half his eyes and looked dozily on the ground. He suddenly widened his eyes in shock and tried to back away, but since he was leaning against the wall, he couldn't move further back. Broly distanced himself for a few meters. The frost demon looked at them in shock. How? How did you damn scions find me? He shouted at them and wanted to point at them, but he lost strength and sunk to the ground. The others were of course confused and didn't know what to say until Broly spoke out. Humph, what a joke. You have nowhere to escape. Just tell us the location. Broly looked down on him with a fierce expression. The others looked at him with an expression that said, What the hell are you talking about? No, I will never tell you where we hid the curse breaker. The frost demon suddenly spotted Zonya and shouted at her, What are you doing? Hera, how could you betray us? All existence will be doomed if they can break it. Curse? What curse is he talking about? Broly picked up the frost demon. Tell me everything you know about the curse and I will let you live. Never. Ah. The frost demon suddenly released a terrifying amount of ki as it swept outwards, destroying everything in its path. Broly jumped back and directly went legendary and created a barrier between the frost demon and his group. After a few seconds, the light faded and the dust slowly settled down. A huge crater was revealed at the spot where the frost demon exploded. A suicide technique that went beyond one's body's limit. He couldn't believe how strong this last attack was. It was even able to threaten him, if he didn't have paid attention. Maybe I should have used another approach. If I acted like a goody two-shoes, I could have gained more information. Sai, someone held his hand. He looked at Kana who smiled faintly at him. He wouldn't have listened to us anyway. He only saw us as science, and that was reason enough for him. Yeah, if he knew that we were clueless about the curse, he wouldn't have told us anything anyway. Aaliyah said, as she grasped his other hand, while shrugging her shoulders. Yeah, whatever. He was decisive enough to kill himself instead of spilling anything. He would have probably tried to kill you guys at any given chance. It is just a frost demon anyway. The universe wouldn't miss him. Zongya spoke out as well. Broly looked at her with a smile. He will just have to make a wish to Shenlong to get some information. He didn't think he would never find out about it anyway. The only thing that bothered him was that the frost demon seemed to be trapped inside the crystal for eons, which would mean that the curse goes way back. Broly unconsciously stared at Zongya as he pondered about it. What? Don't expect a hug from me. Zongya snorted before turning her head away while a slight blush lingered on her face. And thanks for saving me. Us. Saving us. Aaliyah squinted her eyes at Zongya, who avoided her gaze. Broly petted Aaliyah and Kana's head for a bit before taking a few steps forward. He pushed the things of what the frost demon said into the back of his mind. He wouldn't have known anything about it if he didn't come here. He had only gained from it, and now it was time to get what he was actually here for. 
He started circulating his energy like it was depicted on the wall under the temple and just looked down afterwards. He raised his hand and slashed downwards, creating a key wave which tore through the ground. The ground split open for a few kilometers in length and a few meters in width. He headed straight downwards. It was only a guess, but it seems like he was right. The technique depicted on the wall was not only able to absorb the energy, but it created a faint connecting to the energy inside. Since it is a technique catered towards absorbing a specific energy, it was able to sense the energy the technique attracted. He flew deeper into the planet as he felt the connection grow stronger. Since he knew that the only living creature on this planet just died, he could only rely on the connection to make out the location. But it was only noticeable in close approximation to the said energy, which would take weeks to find the crystal. He just started to circulate his energy according to the technique and was surprised to find out that he could feel it below him. That was why he headed down now. They shouldn't be far away. Confirming his guess, he had found another cave with a 8x8x8 by by big blue crystal hovering in the middle of the room. Inside was energy rotating. That was easier than I thought, Zongya said as they landed behind Broly. He didn't bother with her and approached the crystal. He looked around with his vision and tried to sense for something or someone else in the room before he said, Cover me. While I am absorbing it, he cut his palm open, pressed it on the crystal and started circulating the technique. He felt the energy inside it being attracted towards his hand and slowly entered his body. It headed towards his center where his key and life force were being generated, but it didn't enter it but seemed to enforce and expand it with something for a while. Only after half an hour, it started entering the empty place where his center was expanding and gathered there. It wasn't some kind of key or life force, but it was still something he was familiar with. He endlessly gathered inside the center while a wisp of energy was used to change his center. He guessed that it needed a place inside, and it had to change the center to accommodate this new energy. After hours, he finally finished absorbing it, and he could feel that he gained the same ability or rather affinity to generate this new energy, and then he finally remembered where he had felt this energy before. It felt like the energy from the fire breath of the Dracos on Perditus. I thought it was weird. I felt the key they used in the breath, but I also sensed something else. I just thought it was because it is an innate ability which makes it different. Well, it is an innate ability, but they aren't only using key, they are also using this kind of energy. Just what is it? All right, I am done, you can have the rest. Broly stood up and looked at the amount he used from the crystal. The crystal was reduced to a size of 3 meters. This was normally more than enough for 12 people, so Aaliyah and Kana went ahead and started absorbing the energy. What are you waiting for? You two, he said to Zonya. I dash, you sure? I thought it was only for your girlfriends. No, it is for friends. Why else would I have taught you the technique to absorb it? Go absorb it, if you consider us as friends, that is... Zongya looked at him for a second before she quietly went to the crystal and absorbed the energy inside. While they were occupied with absorbing the energy inside, Broly focused on the energy inside his center. He guided it out to his hands and released it, but nothing happened. It just dispersed in the air. The only thing he could feel through it was the connection to the life force and the key he naturally generated. They seemed to be interlinked with each other. The others were already done absorbing the energy. Wow, it increased my magic power. I can finally use it, Aaliyah said, until her body suddenly changed into a blue dress. Mine as well, Zhangya added. Magic power? You mean this is magic power? Broly was shocked. For some reason, he couldn't obtain a wisp of magic power, even after training with the techniques in the library for days. Aaliyah, Kana and Zhangya were able to grasp it after a day, but the energy they could gather were minuscule and weren't good for anything. So they didn't bother training it. Did you guys gain an ability? Broly inquired. I did. Kana shouted out happily and stretched out her hands. Out of her palms emerged aquamarine lightning that shot towards Broly. Broly just took it and the lightning started wrapping itself around Broly. HM? This is... Broly tried to move but realized that he his control of his body was being restrained. It felt like his body was numbed and paralyzed. His muscles expanded and his hair rose. His key poured out until his eyes turned yellow. With a key shockwave the lightning was being dispersed. Impressive. You can even hold me down in my base. Kana looked rather smug after he complimented her. Broly, I did gain one as well. Aaliyah said and pointed at him with one finger. A red fire beam shot towards him. He felt his movements being influenced. He felt being physically drawn towards it, but he had no intention of dodging anyway. The beam finally hit him but couldn't push him backwards. It burned through his armor. 
it couldn't leave a mark on his skin, as he was still in his Ikari form. What about you? Broly turned towards Zongya, who just shook her head. So, Broly, what ability did you learn? Can you automatically generate magic power? Aaliyah asked him. Yes, I did, Broly admitted. Can we go back? Or do you want to have this conversation on this ice block floating in space? Zongya rushed them to go back. On board Broly went through all techniques that used magic power at its basis. He also found a general introduction to magic power. It said that magic power is a mysterious energy that had almost no limitations, but it was only reasonable to focus mainly on magic if one is born with great talent or an unusual high amount of magic in one's body. Some races are more adept in using it than others, but generally every deity have magic abilities or can use magic. It is said to be able to become anything you want, creating elements, minerals or other more complex things consisting out of multiple elements is entirely possible. One can also use the elements to attack but Ki would be the better option as it is more destructive. Another method to attack with magic power would be mental attacks. It can even go so far that one can control someone who is normally far stronger than oneself. Broly thought of the instances of magic uses in the series, it was usually only used to create something like clothes or catch in, which was one of the strongest metals in the universe. But Babidi for example could control Dabura the king of the demon realm, a being who was supposedly stronger than Cell. The teleportation of the Kais should be included as well, Broly faintly remembered reading about it in his past life. It would make sense why the instant transmission is only possible through key senses and Kibito was able to teleport himself wherever he wanted. But now that he thought about it, in the series were also instances of elemental attacks like the fire breath of Harudagarn which was a being brought to life by sorcerers. It wasn't detailed in the series but Broly figured that those elemental attacks had to be a product of magic. He knew that Ki in high concentration could produce lightning but fire or water. He hadn't heard about that. Fortunately for him there were some techniques in the library that explained how to create elemental attacks and the most common technique among magic users was there as well magic materialization. Before he started to immerse himself into the utilization of magic, he set course on the last destination on his list for now. Planet Earth. He typed in the coordinates of the planet and started the autopilot. It would take them one month to cross almost the whole Milky Way to get there. So, we are visiting Giant Sun? Kana's voice suddenly sounded out behind him. Yeah, Kana squinted her eyes before continuing. You won't bully him, right? Eh, of course not. Hoo hoo, Broly faked a laugh. Sigh, could you finally turn around? Broly turned his head and saw her standing in lingerie. He quickly scanned the spaceship with his life force vision and saw Aaliyah and Zongya eating, but what he did saw was a change to his vision. If he concentrated on it, he was faintly able to see energy particles that didn't belong to life force, but to key and magic as well. It seemed to fill the surroundings. It was weird, but he was able to see how some particles combined with each other and got some ideas on how to combine his magic with his key attacks, especially his thunder spear. If he combined it with magic lightning, the strength would rise exponentially, which was confirmed by the general introduction about magic. It said that some key attack compatible with magic would result in a rise of strength. Usually one would need to use magic as the foundation and use Ki as a support, since Ki was mostly a destructive energy and magic would be able to adapt to it to some degree. But it was not impossible to use Ki as the foundation, if one had enough skill that is. As he went through on how to combine his attacks with magic, Kana was being hugged from behind by Aaliyah. Is he coming up with new techniques? Yeah. He just started, so he probably comes out of his thinking modus after an hour. Nice underwear, by the way. Where did you get that? You know the last planet we visited, Hua Kana was surprised that Broly suddenly stood up, as she didn't expect him to be finished so soon. I thought you were coming up with techniques. Well, I don't know much about magic yet, so I have to make some research, but first I will devour you. You were just too cute when you said that in the cave. Kana blushed at the thought about it. Although she was a dirty talker, she rarely said anything romantically. Broly picked them up and headed towards their bedroom. He let them both down and they turned towards him before Aaliyah jumped at him and dangled from his neck and spoke out. I love you, Broly. She gave him a passionate kiss afterwards. Broly suddenly felt Kana holding his hand and shyly said, I love you, Dash. Her head was already red as a tomato at this point. Broly took her in his arms, hugged her tightly before giving Kana a deep kiss. He took them both in his arms and just looked at the two for a moment. I love you, Kana. Aaliyah. The girl's eyes widened. This is the first time you said it. They both said in unison. It was about time, wasn't it? Broly looked at them affectionately. 
which caused the girls to tear up before burying their heads in his chest. Zhangya saw the three ran into their bedroom and frustratedly bit her lip. I guess I am going to train all night. It is not like I could sleep anyway, right? Indeed, it became a long night for the love trio, as they went on without stopping and no consideration of any other person on this ship. Halfway across the Milky Way, their journey was undisturbed until one day they were tailed by another spaceship. Broly immediately told them to slow down the ship and greet them in person. He didn't want them to shoot at their ship. Although his ship wasn't defenseless on the contrary, it was a tough nut to crack and the retaliation would be fierce as well. He just trusted his body more than the ship. Besides, if something was destroyed, it would only delay their journey. Broly stepped out of his ship with his battle armor and waited for them, floating in space. Shortly after, a variety of aliens flew outside with cannons attached to their arm. They wore the standard armor of the Frisia army. Finally, some pray, it is just too hard to survive after Lord Frisia's injury. True, these people form the Galactic Patrol are becoming more and more aggressive. Come on, let's ravage this ship and get on with it. I don't want the patrol to be on our butts again. Are you done? Broly spoke out. Aye, shut the hell up. Who said you can talk, you mother dash? Broly appeared right in front of him shocking the living shit out of the alien. Bastard! The alien shouted as he tried to raise his arm and shoot Broly, but he couldn't move it, no matter how hard he tried. Pfft! That does look funny. Broly pointed at his arm. The other aliens grasped as they looked at their comrade. You, your arm! Someone shouted. The alien looked down and saw nothing. His arm was nowhere to be seen. There was only blood floating around in zero gravity. He wanted to scream, but a hand clutched his neck. Not a single word was able to escape his lips. He was flailing around but to no avail until his neck snapped. All right, I don't have the nerve to play with every single one of you. Broly waved his arm and dozens of key blasts flew out of his palm and homing on a different alien each. No! Retreat! Aw shit! Who is that monstwa? He helped. The group was instantly decimated and pulverized into space dust with no survivors. Broly headed to the enemy's ship which already started its engine, ready to take off, but would Broly let them? Broly, as if teleporting, appeared in front of the ship and pressed his hand against it, stopping it from moving. He raised his other hand and shot a few key beams through the ship's window. Without able to resist the pilots were easily pierced by the attack. Broly ripped open hole into the ship with his hands and entered it without concern. Everything inside was being sucked out by the empty space, but Broly quickly closed it with a key barrier. He picked up a thin orange alien, who only lost a lower leg and was nowhere near to dying. Hello, my friend. I just wanted to ask if there was something of value on this ship. The alien just looked horrified at him. He was panting and sweating heavily from the pain, but Broly showed no compassion for him. Broly furrowed his eyebrows, seeing the alien nor respond. Let me rephrase that. Tell me about something that is of value and hopefully for you. It should be enough to save your life. There is nothing on board. We are in a tight spot, since Lord Frisia was injured by a Super Scion. We are on low budget, since King Cold took Frisia's army. I swear there is nothing on here. Please have mercy. Broly only rolled his eyes at the mention of mercy, as if anyone in Cold's or Frisia's army ever showed mercy. I didn't say I would let you off for free, Sue. He just flew up, through the roof into space. He turned around and waved his hand, sending out a key wave instantly pulverizing the ship before he headed towards his own ship. He entered and was greeted with three females happily chatting with each other while eating. Unbelievable. What if I was dying outside? Well, then we all would be messed up, Zhangya said as she cut her meat into a smaller piece and ate it, which was quite the contrast to the devouring female Saiyans on the side. AI, I thought you would at least give me verbal support. I am not the legendary Super Saiyan, but we all are. Kana raised an eyebrow and responded with a full mouth. Swallow before you speak. Gulp. For you, I always swallow. Kana gave him a wink before continuing. But we are the legendary Super Scion. What kind of dumb saying is that? Ahem. Don't worry about it. How long till we reach Earth? Another two weeks. I already turned the autopilot on, sit down and eat. Aaliyah said as she put some plates on the table and pulled the empty chair out. Broly gave her a kiss. Thank you. Aaliyah smiled happily. Broly couldn't help but squish her cheek. Man, you are adorable. Aaliyah was blushing slightly and sat down next to Kana. Broly couldn't help but smile contently as he sat down and looked at the two. 
I really can't get enough of you too. He started eating and was quickly devouring the food. The two girls stopped moving as their face changed crimson red. Broly loved how easily they were flustered when there was company around, even after five years of intimacy and affection. In the last two weeks of training, he memorized every magic technique, everything about magic utilization. He became more efficient in using magic. He was able to convert it into elemental attacks. Kana and Aaliyah also taught him how they felt when they used their abilities. It made him understand how to convert the magic into other materials, seemingly out of thin air. He also mastered how to create clothes, but he failed to increase the weight of the clothes to a satisfying degree and which didn't obstruct his movements. He had to use more energy for stronger materials or for a higher amount of something. So, to create catch-in, he would need to spend much more time training to be more proficient in magic usage before he could succeed. As for now, he was only able to increase the weights of his clothes to a few tens of kilograms. In the future, when his magic reached a higher level, it would be tremendously helpful to train with them on. For the next two weeks, he concentrated on his magic use as they shot through space towards Earth. On occasion, there would be people who would try to rob them. In the beginning, they used it as a way to kill some time, but it became so frequent that they didn't bother and started to escape or attack with their ship. Broly found it really satisfying to fly a spaceship and have a space battle. With his superior reflexes, he was able to close and surpass the gap of skill between him and the other pilots. It delayed their journey for another week, but finally as Broly gazed out of the window, he saw the familiar blue planet. Remember what I said? Hide your aura. Yeah, yeah, and if we see Earthlings wanting to fight us, don't kill them. Zongya added. The ship started to become more and more transparent until it vanished from sight. It quickly entered the atmosphere of Earth and headed straight for land. It directly landed on an island deep out in the ocean, far away from the public eye. There was a large forest on the island with plenty of wildlife. A door of the ship seemingly opened out of nowhere, since they were still cloaked. A tall figure stepped out. Of course, this was Broly. He took a deep breath and inhaled the fresh air. The girls followed him outside and took a breath as well. It seemed they enjoyed the air as well. It has been a while since they spent most of their time training inside the spaceship for years and only stepped out to get some supplies. It was always refreshing for them to move around for a while. This was especially true for a beautiful planet like this. Broly enjoyed being in the nature since his past life. That was also one of the reasons why he took such a long time to travel around on Perditus. So, are we going to visit Giant Sun? Aaliyah asked. Considering what the alien said about Frisia, he will only arrive in a year. While we are waiting, we are having a small vacation and enjoy the food here. But our main objective is the Dragon Balls. Dragon Balls? Yes. They are crystal orbs that can fulfill any wish. Well, not any but a large range of wishes. Fulfill wishes? Yes, it is even possible to revive people with them. After Broly said that he looked at Kana, who was visible shaken. But she didn't say anything, as the two have already talked about it. She didn't need to take revenge anymore. But to revive her family is something she couldn't resist. Broly told her that since it has been a long time, there could be problems with this wish and if these Dragon Balls couldn't get the job done, then they had to find more powerful Dragon Balls. Broly also told her that they won't use the ones from Earth but the ones from the Namekians, since they could fulfill more wishes. He also had other uses so she needed to wait a bit longer. She said that she could wait years for it and that Broly should focus first on his wishes. Alright, first stop will be the Capsule Corporation headquarters. To make it easier to find the Dragon Balls, we need a radar. It will also be helpful on New Namek. Cool. And where is it? Zhangya asked. Right, let's ask an Earthling. Oh? You don't know. I already thought you knew everything about this planet. Zhangya shaded her eyes with her hand as she gazed at the glaring sun. He he he. Of course not. Alright, let's get moving. They started flying slowly. Since Broly asked them to stay low-key for now, they only had low amount of key at disposal. After a while, they reached what seemed like the mainland. Broly used his life force vision to find the nearest city and they all headed towards it. They landed at the suburbs and some guy's eyes almost popped out. He shook his head heavily, seemingly denying what he just saw. Broly approached him. The guy was terrified because of the stature of Broly. He took a few steps backwards. Hey, I have dash, Broly couldn't finish his sentence before the guy started a full sprint away, almost tripping on the way. Ahem. Okay, let me try, Aaliyah said as she put her hand over her chest. She went up to a young woman. Hello, miss? Can I ask you a question? The young woman didn't seem respond as she stared dazed at Aaliyah. 
Her cheeks became crimson red. I, I, yes, please, I ask away. For some reason she was stuttering. Aaliyah tilted her head in confusion. This act seemed to have short-circuit the young woman. As smoke seemed to come out of her head, Aaliyah grasped her hand. Are you okay? E, yes, my queen. What do you want to know? Ahem, okay. I want to know where exactly the West City is. Yes, of course, the West City. You only have to head this way and the third city you come across is the West City. Oh, thank you very much. Hope you have a nice day. Aaliyah turned around and walked towards her group. I, do you want to go on a date with me? The woman suddenly shouted out. Sorry, I already have a boyfriend. Aaliyah turned her head to answer and pointed at Broly, who was grinning the whole time. I dash, the woman's head was red as a tomato and suddenly ran away in embarrassment. Oh Aaliyah, you are even attracting the women. I wouldn't have expected anything less from my girl. Broly said happily. I didn't do anything. Aaliyah shyly responded. The people here are weird. Zhangya commented. Well, it is probably because you guys are so beautiful. Broly said as he looked at the people around them, staring at him and the girls. Some even took out their phones and took pictures. All right, let's go to West City. Why didn't we just orbit it around the planet and quickly search the city you want to go to? Because it is fun. We were training for years inside that ship. Now we can have some fun. Asking for the way is fun for you? Zhangya rebuked. Well, talking with other people, see new things. Or are you just satisfied with seeing and talking to me? Broly teased her. Her ears slightly became red. H. Humph. Broly started flying upwards towards West City. The girls followed behind him. This started a commotion among the people that had gathered around them. They were flashing with their phones after them. They were sharing those pictures with their friends and on social media with titles like Gods Are Among Us, Superheroes Visit Triple X City and so on. They quickly arrived in the next city and Broly again landed in the middle of the street. He ignored the tumult he caused and headed straight into a restaurant and ordered the whole menu. Of course, now the group didn't complain as they waited for the food to come. After a short while the food was delivered to their table completely taking up all the space. Like Scions do, they quickly devoured their food like there was no tomorrow. This is so good! Kana exclaimed and even Zhangya was hasting to eat, as she feared that there would be nothing left with these Scions around. In the ship they usually had simple food only with Broly came some variation into their meals. Now they had dozens of different variations of delicious food. They even ordered seconds and thirds. Only after an hour were their stomach filled to the brim. Afterwards they just left. The waiter wanted to stop them but was afraid of Broly. Broly just gave him a small block of gold he just materialized and went out. He flew and speeded up to West City. This time without any distraction, they arrived at the city in a short moment. They hovered over the city, while Broly scanned the city. Soon he found the famous building with Capsule Corp written on the outside wall. You wait here, I do this alone. Broly quickly approached the building and lowered his aura to the minimum. He used his life force vision to see if there was anyone near. Making sure no one could see him he quickly made his way inside. Of course already with a hoodie, he materialized over his head. He quickly ran through the huge building to find their laboratory. After searching for a while, he found the entrance and saw Dr. Brief work on something. He looked through the things on the table and quickly found what he was looking for a small round radar with a button on the top. Suddenly the air seemed to stagnate, and the ground and wall started cracking. The next thing his figure and the radar blinked away without notice. If one doesn't count the shocked expression from Krillin and Yamcha, what was that? Yamcha shouted out in shock. Yo, you felt that too? Krillin looked terrified around him searching for anyone who could have leaked that immense key. Yeah, I almost thought someone fired an attack at us. Even after a while, they found nothing and nothing seemed to happen. Broly quickly arrived back to his group and waved the radar in his hand. Got it. So that is the radar, it is smaller than I thought. Zhangya said as she saw the radar. Ouch, Zhangya. Not nice, HM. Anyway, why do we even need to hide? Can't we just take it? Why? Because if we make an entrance, it has to be epic. We can't just approach them and ask for the radar and leave afterward. Zhangya rolled her eyes, while Aaliyah just giggled. All right, let's see where they are. Shouldn't take too long to gather all of them. He pressed on the button and instantly a few arrows appeared on the screen. He double-pressed the button, and it zoomed out, showing the locations. All right, follow me. Broly started to fly towards the nearest one. All right, it should be around here. They hovered over a small lake. A waterfall ended in. They were rather deep in the wilderness. 
but Broly let out his aura, which scared all the animals away. All right, let's search. It will be better if we spread out. Remember, it is a small crystal-like orange ball with stars inside it, which looks the same no matter from which side you look at it. All right, whoever finds it first gets a night alone with Dash. Kana wanted to bet on something but was quickly interrupted. Found it! Zhangya suddenly spoke out before diving into the lake. After a few seconds, she came back out and held the ball in hand. It reflected the sunshine. So, what did I win? Zhangya said with a smug face. You won a whole end night are alone in the storage room. Yes, for a whole night you can choose whichever meal you want. Kana panicked and said some bullshit. Obviously, she did not think about the fact that Zhangya could also win. She only rolled her eyes as a response and threw the dragon ball towards Broly, who caught it and put it into a small brown bag. He had just materialized. Man, this ability is really useful. With their strength, it wouldn't have taken long to gather them all. But Broly always messed around and went to different cities to look around. The others were happy to comply, as they would always discover new delicious food to eat. Zhangya also took great interest in the culinary world on this planet. After a few days, they had gathered six Dragon Balls and were on their way to the last one. They were flying through rock formations. The surroundings looked like the one Vegeta and Kakarot first fought. The others didn't know why, but Broly was happy to see the environment. For them, it looked like wasteland with a bunch of rocks, but for Broly, it was a historical site of great emotional value. Although he was never here, it didn't hold his joy back. After a while, they closed in on the location until they saw a figure sitting cross-legged on top of a pillar like boulder. In front of her on the ground was the three-star dragon ball, the last they needed to gather to fulfill their wish. It was a young, beautiful woman with bluish skin and a tail. Her orange hair was tied in a ponytail, and her blue eyes conveyed an unwavering determination. She was well-toned with no unnecessary bulking muscles, obviously a body trained with martial arts. She looked at them with no surprise in her eyes. Broly and the other girls land on a rock formation, each not far from each other. He scanned her and thought she was familiar, but couldn't just put his finger on it. Hello, dear. Is it possible that you can give us the ball in front of you? I wondered when you would finally come. She picked up the dragon ball and stood up. She only looked at Broly and shortly glanced at Zhangya. She raised the dragon ball behind her head and threw it hard at Broly. It wasn't hard in terms of human strength, but hard in terms of Broly's. Even Broly wouldn't be able to throw it as strong in his base form. In an instant Broly buffed up. His hair rose like that of a super scion and began to shine golden and his eyes turned yellow. He had turned directly into his super scion Ikari. As he caught the dragon ball with one arm and jumped over a sweeping leg. Broly instantly kicked out with all his might. His leg tore through the air straight at the woman. But she just crossed her arms. Blocking the attack while being thrown into the air. The others were already in their battle stances and transformed into their most powerful form. The woman dropped her guard and revealed shining yellow eyes. The group was shocked. This looked and felt like the Akari form from Broly. You. Who are you? Broly growled at the woman. Humph. I never thought you were this weak. Father. With a sneer. She looked at him. With the same expression. She looked at the girls with a cursory glance. Broly narrowed his eyes as he saw that woman look at his girls in disgust. So, you are from the future? Think you can just disrespect me? Broly's body instantly increased in size, adapting a three-meter-tall physique. His eyes were still yellow, evidently he was still in his Akari form. He shot through the air and instantly appeared in front of the woman. He threw a punch with an accompanying thunderous boom as it headed straight at the woman's head. It instantly pierced through the head, but there was no blood. The figure of the woman slowly faded away. An afterimage? He felt someone behind him and without further thought just rotated his body while kicking out. The woman just raised her left arm and easily blocked the kick. Broly was shocked as he saw that and quickly distanced himself. The woman had transformed. Her hair pointed into the sky with a shining green hue. Her eyes turned yellow as well, but instead of a bulky transformation, she was as lean as before. The air around her was electrified as lightning circulated around her. Broly instantly knew that this was the legendary Super Scion 2. What do you want? Broly's serious voice was booming more than usual. What I want? Your head. She disappeared from his sight, only to re-emerge on his side, stabbing into his side with her arm. It took his breath as he shot through the air into the rock formation, pulverizing everything in his path. Only after a few hundred meters, 
He regained balance midair and quickly stopped his momentum. He flew into the air and saw how Aaliyah, Kana and Zhangya headed straight at the woman from the future. You, bitch! Kana screamed out as she released hundreds of punches and kicks in seconds, but no matter how hard she tried, the opponent used little movements to evade her attacks. Zhangya and Aaliyah quickly joined in and attacked her from all sides, but the difference was too obvious. The woman causally waved her arm, and a shockwave in all directions shot the girls away like cannonballs. The woman turned her head and saw a green light sizzling through the air towards her. Her arrogant expression changed for the first time. Her hair suddenly changed from the green into a blue, as she seemed to grab something in the air. She released a divine pressure on the surrounding people as she held a green, shining spear only a few centimeters away from her face. I have never seen you use this technique before, father. With a squeeze, the spear shattered into pieces. How, how is this possible? Super Scion Blue? Oh, as informed as ever. Why don't you tell me why you want me dead? I believe this is just a big misunderstanding. After seeing his mightiest attack being blocked easily, he knew that he wouldn't stand a chance against her. Maybe he could beat her if they were around the same strength, but Super Scion Blue was too far away for him. Strangely, though, he became calmer, understanding his dire situation. Misunderstanding? Don't think you can sway me with your words. You are just scum, who needs to be eradicated. She shouted at him. Even this put pressure on him. He hadn't thought that the distance to a god would be so far. I think you have a wrong view of me. I am actually a nice guy. Nice guy, you... She suddenly disappeared and reappeared in front of Broly. She slammed her fist into his stomach, making Broly spit out. She knocked him into the ground and released a fiery of attacks on him. He crossed his arms in front of his arms, but the defense was easily destroyed as the attacks seemingly came with no end. She pummeled him into the ground without stopping, like she needed to vent something. It was a strange sight to see a young woman thrash a three-meter-tall monster-like man. The universe is better without you. A punch directly hit his throat, making him gasp. Cough. Cough. Since I am your father. Cough. How about you talk to me? We can resolve this peacefully. Broly held his throat as blood leaked out of his mouth. The woman slowly hovered above him. Humph, accept your death, Broly. A key blade formed in her hand as she raised her arm and pointed it at Broly's head. Suddenly, vigor appeared in Broly's eyes again. Hiya! Broly's energy instantly erupted like a violent volcano. A key blade with another energy formed over his hand as he stabbed towards her. He used everything he had, he was burning life force as fast as he could, he poured all his key and magic power he had stored in his body and put it in this final attack. Like a deadly laser beam, the blade extended towards the woman as he thrust his arm towards the woman. Like an unstoppable force, it instantly reached the woman and pierced her body. The blade extended seemingly endlessly into the sky. Broly was shocked, not because of the strength of his attack, but what the woman did. Her body created multiple afterimages as she moved out of the blade's way by turning her body slightly. He didn't pierce her, but her movement just created another afterimage. She was too fast for him to grasp. He looked at her in shock. Nice try, but your death is needed. It has to be done. She stretched out her hand towards him and in an instant a blade appeared. Broly looked down and saw the key blade piercing right through his chest. He had already transformed back to his base as he had no energy to support his legendary state anymore. But even if he had, there was no way to beat this opponent. He could faintly hear the screams of Aaliyah, Kana and Zhangya. The woman from the future pulled out the blade and dispersed it. Without strength, his arm fell to the ground as he coughed out blood. He looked into the sky and saw the others attack her, but the woman just chopped at their necks, making them instantly faint. The woman slowly landed beside him again and the arrogance and disgust which was ever present in her eyes disappeared as tears appeared in her eyes, falling on top of Broly. She kneeled down next to him and supported his head. I thought I could hate you after all you did, but I just can't. I am sorry dad, I had to. I was the only one left. I am so sorry. Her sobbing resounded in the surroundings, but Broly wasn't able to hear anything anymore as his conscious was plunged into darkness. As soon as Broly's conscious faded, the black pearl span faster until black threads shot out and spread all over his key center. It leached onto Broly's life force pearl, key and magic power. The energy flowed through those threads towards him, making the pearl seem like a black hole as it devoured everything. This process didn't stop here. The threads started spreading through his key and headed towards Broly's spine and head. 
It attached itself onto his brain and nervous system. The woman didn't notice this as she was crying, and the process only took a few seconds. Only after seeing the black lines over Broly's skin, she noticed that something was wrong. But this was enough time for the threads to spread through the whole body. Broly's eyes shot open. He instantly grabbed towards the woman, but she was barely able to evade it. She quickly distanced herself and turned Super Saiyan Blue. The wound she inflicted on Broly was quickly being melded with black threads. He slowly stood up and started cracking his neck with his hands. Ha 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 ha. This body is phenomenal. Although it is very weak, its potential is almost endless. Generating life force, key and magic power? This is a treasure trove. What do you mean this body? Who are you? He squinted his eyes as he looked back at the woman. Me? I am Cacus and you? Hmm. It seems like you are a close relative to this body. Probably his daughter. He. He suddenly buffed up, becoming a three-meter giant, and his eyes turned yellow. What did you do to him? She suddenly disappeared and emerged on one side of Cacus. Her leg tore through the air, instantly appearing in front of Cacus. Cacus evaded the hit by bending backwards and retaliated with a kick of his own. She blocked it with her hands and quickly followed with a kick against his side. Cacus shot through the air but not even 10 meters away he had regained his balance. She squinted her eyes as she saw this. You? Have you always been in my dad's body? HM? Ha 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 ha. Yes, I have been reborn with him. His soul guided mine from a prison far away to this universe. To this body. I was lucky that I was the first to notice something strange. As soon as I saw his soul, I immediately latched onto him, and we were directly sucked into a rift. This, her eyes seemed to flicker with uncertainty. Oh, don't cry, sweetie. I would have taken over this body even without you. You just shortened the time by a few decades. To be honest, I was prepared to sleep for eons as I didn't think that the bloodline I enslaved still existed. Notice my return and actually supplied me with life force. Ha 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 ha. Once slaves, now worshippers. It is too funny. Ha 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 ha. You. Give my dad his body back or dash? Or else what? You have so much power, but have no idea how to use it. There is no way in darkness that you can beat me. As soon as he finished Cacus seemed to teleport in front of the woman and slammed his fist inside her stomach. She shot through a mountain and bounced over the ground several times. She quickly used her legs on the ground to stop her speed as she created a hundred meter long trenches. She calmly looked at Cacus who possessed her father's body to walk towards her. We killed him Cacus once. Although I am alone, he is much weaker this time. She grabbed into her left pocket inside her pants before she straightened her back and steadied her breath as she slowly got into her battle stance, which resembled Broly's. Left foot in front of her right and her arms slightly outstretched to the side. As his response, his eyes started shining brighter with every step. They both instantly vanished. A thunderous boom sounded out as they collided with each other and Cacus was sent flying. The shockwave directly pulverized the rock formations as it swept through the surroundings. The two started exchanging attacks as they rose into the air. Every collision shook the earth and the space trembled. The only reason why the whole planet didn't crumble apart was of their precise control. The earthquake-like tremble woke up the three girls. They slowly opened their eyes as they only heard cataclysm explosions thundering in the background. They looked into the sky and only saw how space distorted in several places. This fight wasn't just leagues above them, it was a whole different dimension of power they couldn't even imagine reaching. They didn't dare approach the heavenly figures in the sky, as they were afraid even stray energy would instantly pulverize them. Is that Broly? Zongya asked as she tried to catch a glimpse of the figures in the sky. Maybe it feels like similar to his key. I also can't sense anything from the other person except pressure. What is going on? Suddenly, a figure appeared behind the girls. It grabbed them, and they all vanished from sight. The fight went on for a minute, with her easily dominating Cacus. She could end this fight in an instant, but she couldn't kill him without killing her father. While she tried to find another way, Cacus' strength increased as they fought. It wouldn't take long before he becomes a threat. Suddenly, a punch headed straight at her face. She evaded it and rotated her body. She used the momentum of the punch to do a shoulder throw. Cacus crashed heavily onto the ground, instantly creating a massive crater. The woman was breathing calmly. She let her gaze wander through the surroundings before she saw Cacus hovering in the air not far away. His mouth leaked a bit of blood. He wiped it away and looked at the blood on his backhand. He showed no fear despite the numerous cuts on his body. 
He seemed to be not bothered by the fact that he was being overpowered as he melded his wounds with black threads. You seem to be rather calm, not worried that you are about to die. The woman raised an eyebrow as her gaze stopped at his chest for a second. His key feels similar to previously again and the lines are slowly disappearing. Is he fusing with dad's body? He only grinned as a response as he looked down on the planet. He suddenly rose his arm and swung it down. A wave of key blast directly headed towards Earth while he turned around and outstretched his arms forward. It looked like he was ripping apart space as it created a white tear at his fingertips. The woman had already deflected the attack and shot towards Cacus, who had almost escaped. He already put a foot inside until two figures appeared on his sides and grabbed an arm on each side. What? Surprised by the unexpected people, he immediately tried to flee, but they immediately flung him away. He quickly regained his balance and looked at the newcomers. He squinted his eyes. Gods of destruction? A slim purple and hairless humanoid Espagonix cat with wide long ears and a shining blue jelly like humanoid with purple eyes. His hair joined together to form a pointy tip on his head. Dispo Maji Keo. Took you long enough. At least we didn't arrive too late. I had to get some people out of harm's way. It is my duty to help them. Dispo patted his own chest as he said that. Anyway, let's get this done with. Since you weren't able to take Broly out on your own, we will do it for you. TSH, don't become cocky. I may have become rusty, but mere gods won't be able to get rid of me, especially not weak gods like you. Cacus erupted with a huge amount of key and two green key blade formed inside his palms. Before Cacus was able to move, Dispo emerged right in front of him and closed in with a hand that shone in a purple color. What? Hakai! Wait! Don't kill him! The woman shouted out. Cacus panicked, seeing the purple destruction energy approach him. Without further thought, his key blades exploded inside his hands, throwing him barely out of harm's way. His arms were bloody, but he was still alive as he shot through the air. Suddenly, several blue jelly spikes followed him. At the end of each spike shone with purple color. They were evidently powered with Hakai energy as they pursued Kakus. Kakus immediately chose to flee, but the spikes didn't give up on the chase. He could only flee in haste. He heard how the spikes penetrated the ground behind him, and it's crumbling apart afterward. He gritted his teeth and flew into the air, turned around and shot a key blast at Majikeo, hoping to distract him. All of a sudden, the woman appeared right in front of his face and pressed her hand on his chest. Hakai! Kakus widened his eyes as he looked at his chest. The Hakai energy was slowly erasing the black threads that melded his wound. Without giving him any opportunities, the blue jelly-like spikes from Maji Keo accurately hit the wounds melded with black threads, erasing the threads from existence. Dispo appeared behind him and did the same while driving two fingers inside a wound. Kakus immediately knew what they were trying to do and quickly tried to cut the threads off the pearl, but his pearl seemed to freeze. It was directly attacked by the very life force, key and magic power he had absorbed. It was under the influence of someone else. Broly had regained his conscious. Broly had regained his conscious as soon as Kakus was first hit by Hakai. At that moment, Kakus system, that spread through Broly's body, went into shock, allowing Broly to attain control over his energy again. Broly instantly knew what was going on in his body as he could see the Hakai energy destroying the black threads. Without hesitation, he pumped as much energy into the threads as he could possibly do. He knew that he couldn't destroy the pearl with normal attacks as he had tried it numerous times in the past, so instead, he guided his energy into the black pearl and started rampaging inside, while forcing every bit of life force inside it out. He started destroying the pearl from the inside with everything he got. He even went as far as to let his key and magic power create many explosions inside. If something went wrong, he could potentially cripple himself, but he couldn't hesitate. If he held back, it would be the end for him. However, this enabled him to stun Kakus for a brief moment. Numerous explosions sounded out inside his body as he destroyed the pearl. The Hakais were erasing the black threads inside his body, but Kakus had cut the connection after the initial delay, but it was already too late for him. Holes had already appeared on his pearl. Since he was located inside Broly's center where he generated key, life force and magic power, he had no way to escape. He was sitting trapped inside the lion's den, waiting to be devoured. Kakus was trying to meld the pearl to close off the holes, but Broly made sure to force life force inside, so he could attack him from both sides. It took time. Slowly but surely, Broly was able to tear apart the pearl's shell bit by bit. 
Inside the pearl was a black hair-like wisp of energy, which was evidently Kaka's soul. It started shining as Kakas tried to communicate with Broly. I think we got off on the wrong foot. I was only trying to save us both. I can give you unbelievable knowledge about weight. No, I can break the curse that resides in Nu. Don't. You, you can't kill me the universe's nay dash, without a moment of hesitation. Broly flooded the soul with every bit of energy he got and grinded it to particles. This all happened in only an instant, but it had decided Broly's fate. The pearl inside him had now completely vanished from his center, as well as the threads through his body. Finished, he was trying to open his eyes, but exhaustion overwhelmed him, and he fell into a deep sleep. After an unknown amount of time, Broly slowly opened his eyes. He looked at a familiar desk through a window. He looked around and saw himself inside a healing pod on his personal spaceship. He pressed the button next to the window and the water was slowly being drained. The window door opened. He stepped outside and stared in the mirror on the wall. He was confused for a second before remembering what had happened. He stroked the 10 centimeter long scar on his chest. He frowned for a second before closing his eyes as he sensed the life force in the surroundings. He walked out of the room and headed towards the exit. He opened the hatch and directly jumped out. He walked straight at a person who was roasting a big piece of meat. His body expanded in size until it reached his maximum size of 3 meters. His eyes were shining yellow as he raised his arm. Without saying anything, he consecutively fired off countless key blasts at the person. The figure was surprised at the sudden attack and had no time to evade the blasts. Broly started accelerating as he still fired his key attacks. He broke out in a full force sprint as he directly plunged into the swirled smokescreen. He punched out towards the life force he was sensing. He felt the direct hit. The collision created a shockwave that dispersed the smoke and revealed a blue, shining figure blocking Broly's attack with one hand. Dad, you should take it slow. I dash. Don't freaking dad me. The idea of listening to her bullshit didn't come to Broly's mind as he unleashed a wrathful rain of punches. But no matter how he attacked, it was all easily blocked. Seeing her not retaliate only pissed Broly more off. This supposedly future daughter of his, not only almost killed him, but even disrespected him now by looking at him with these eyes filled with concern. He couldn't stand it. You're a F. His key suddenly rose in strength as lightning appeared around his body, and his hair seemed even more electrified as usual. He was gaining momentum as he attacked her but was still unable to push her back in the slightest. He was in a frenzy as he only thought about beating her up. For minutes this went on, a giant crater already formed underneath them. Trees were uprooted, and boulders pulverized. Suddenly, the woman flicked her arm. He wasn't able to clearly see the movements or react to it, but was able to feel the impact on his neck as he fainted. He woke up in a bed in the infirmary of his ship. He became irritated as he thought about how he lost again to the same woman. He turned his head and saw Aaliyah holding his hand against her lips with Kana sitting next to her, while Zhangya stood off to the side watching them. Seeing them instantly calmed him. You are finally back. I thought you would die dash. Aaliyah's tears fell onto his hand as she gave him a smile. She went through his hair and leaned in for a kiss. Her tears were wetting his face, but he didn't mind as he returned the kiss. Kana already climbed inside the bed and lay down beside him. You really made us worry about you. Her voice was faltering as she tried to suppress herself from sobbing. Although she had turned her head, he knew that Zhongya wiped away her tears quietly. This went on for some time until Broly decided to break the silence. What does she want? Their sobbing stopped and Aaliyah looked at him with a bitter and saddened smile. Promise you won't interrupt me. When I tell her story, he looked at her for a second, but he saw that she already took a firm standpoint on it. All right, I promise. Sigh. You already know that she is from the future. She is your and Zhangya's daughter. Aaliyah looked at the back of the silent Zhangya before continuing. In a few years you would have given birth to her, Helen. It all went well for you, until you changed. She only realized it now. But you were possessed by the soul inside your body after you went out alone in the search of the Super Dragon Balls. Cacus, after taking control of your body, rampaged across the universes and erased most of them. Only in a last standoff with the gods, angels and every other powerful warrior in existence, they were able to defeat Kakis and kill him. The universes in her timeline are in shambles, and they decided to send her and two new appointed gods of destructions into the past and use the Dragon Balls there to revive theirs. Since they already created another timeline, 
She wanted it to be better than hers and kill you before something like her future could happen again. Because you are her father, she wanted to do it herself. But after Cacus took over your body, she realized that you were just another victim of his and saved you. Broly didn't say anything even after she finished. Obviously, he could understand Helen's motivation and thought process. She must have gone through a lot, and it was not an easy task for her to pick up the sword to kill her father. He also saw her cry over his dying body before he slowly fainted. But just because he understood her, it didn't mean he was okay with it. Fact was she tried to kill him, and even if her motivations were good, it certainly didn't make this experience any better for him. Kana saw how he furrowed his eyebrows. You gave me another chance. Can't you give your daughter another one? You don't have to like her, but at least talk to her. He stared deeply into her eyes. Sigh. Very well. Only because of you. Broly stood up and headed out of the ship and saw Helen quietly watching the flames of the campfire a few hundred meters away. She heard the footstep and saw Broly walk towards her. She stood up and turned towards him. The indifferent cold eyes of Broly saddened her and filled her with guilt. Dad, I am so sorry. Call me Broly. I am not ready to be a father yet. All right, Broly. Her tears were coming up again, but she quickly regained her bearing by breathing in deeply. Broly went ahead and sat down beside her and watched the flames of the fire. Broly, I, if I knew that you were being possessed, I always felt like you hid something from everyone and I thought you were hiding this anger to the gods. But in the end, I was too blinded by anger. Cacus had killed everyone that I loved. If, if I knew, I would have never tried to kill you. I hope you can forgive me. What you did takes unbelievable strength. It needs you to be a monster. I wouldn't say I liked what you did. But I as hell would do nothing different than you. You mean, if I knew my daughter would become a murderous bastard who kills everyone I love and care about, I would break her neck as soon as it was being born, throw her in the trash and be done with it. Helen widened her eyes as she heard that. You are way more brutal than I remember. Broly looked at her and snorted. Humph, do wanna know what I really think? What I was really upset about? Of course, please. Yes. Being wanted dead is a shitty experience. Well, I actually like being wanted dead, to see them despair as they are hopeless against me. But I hate it if I am the one that is absolutely powerless against my opponent and only death awaits me. Especially if I was on a vacation and was about to get a wish being granted to me. But what I hated the most was that I was being beaten up by my own daughter. And that you don't freaking celebrate your victory. Ha! Huh. What? Ha! Huh. What you did was freaking badass. You saved the freaking multiverse and saved my butt from being controlled. But instead of freaking showing it off, you are sulking here, wondering if I would forgive you. But you almost died. So, freaking what? I hate being murdered, but I am also the same guy who almost kills himself by training every day. Take some pride that you were able to defeat the legendary Super Scion. Helen smiled faintly as she heard those words. You were always good at cheering me up. Even though you still resent me, Broly rolled his eyes. Of course, I still resent you, you bloody brat. Almost killed me. This especially doesn't mean you are allowed to be sulking around and play the freaking victim card. Who who my dad I tried to kill, doesn't like me. As soon as you go back into your timeline, you will revive your dad and you have your happy end anyway. I, maybe you are right. I just haven't seen you for a long time and I just didn't want you to hate me. Yeah yeah alright let's talk about how you are going to repay me. Repay you? Yeah you can ask for forgiveness with your dad. I don't care. But you still have to make it up to me that you almost butchered me. Understood. How should Dash? Understood. Yes, sir. Helen suddenly sprung up and saluted. Oh my. Seems like I didn't slack of training my kids. You are going to teach me everything I taught you. Starting with the teleportation with the gods. Understood. I heard you came here with newly appointed gods of destruction. Let me guess, they are picking up the super dragon balls to make the wish, right? Yes, I wanted to stay here waiting for you to wake up. They will probably come back in a few months. Oh right. How long have I been out? About a month, we even fed you healing capsules. But there was a lot of damage. A month? Huh? Until your friends come back you are going to teach me, starting from today. But first I need something to eat. I am starving. Broly stood up and flew into the air. He looked around with his life force vision and quickly locked onto something. He instantly disappeared and reappeared with a dead dinosaur in his hands. He threw it on the ground and looked at Helen. You are the cook from now on. After saying that he turned around and headed towards his ship. Um, is something wrong? He turned his head and looked at Helen who seemed to be contemplating about something. 
Don't you want to know about your other kids and major events in the future? No, 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 I don't want to hear any spoilers. Of course, techniques and insights are welcome. Why not? Because it's more fun this way. Besides, your future isn't mine anymore. He casually responded. After saying that he left her standing as he entered his ship. As soon as he entered turned into a room with the window open and was greeted by three girls hastily sitting down at the desk. Eavesdropping, are we? I. Oh my god. Cough. I mean, you are already back. How was your conversation? Kana quickly said. Broly only rolled his eyes as a response. Not bad, Broly. Saying that she should be proud of what she did but that you still resented her and that she needs to make it up to you would make her know that you supported what she did but also convey your feelings about almost being killed. Her way to get even with you would be to teach you all the techniques but it is more of a way to spend more time with you and to calm her down. So, when she returns to her timeline, she would have a clear mind and could stand proudly in front of her father. Eh? I guess. I just want to get her techniques and beat her up afterwards. Obviously he didn't say that out loud. Aaliyah didn't say anything and just stroked his hands. They headed to their relax room and talked about the things that happened in the month Broly was unconscious. It seems like they woke up after Broly was put into a healing chamber. They tried to attack Helen and the two gods but were quickly immobilized. Helen explained her story, which made the three calm down a bit. Seeing Broly slowly recovering also improved their anxiousness. The gods shortly left afterwards with Helen staying behind. In the beginning the girls avoided Helen but she insisted on training the three and gave them some tips to use their energy more efficient. They trained together in the gravity chamber and spend most of their time there. During that time, they quickly understood that Helen was a very kind and sensitive person unlike the first impression she gave them. They were also visited by some earthlings, but because of their cloaking device and their ability to hide key, they weren't able to find them. After chatting with them for a while Helen called them for dinner. They quickly devoured the dinosaur and the girls asked Helen how Broly would be in the future. The version she described was less violent as the Broly now and not nearly as obsessed with training as now. He was also more majestic as the king of the Scions, but Broly stopped them from going further into that direction. Broly had only asked her one vague question, if something happened to his friends that he couldn't fix. To be honest he would have wanted to know if any of his friends died in the future, but since he knew about the Dragon Balls, he was only concerned if they were erased or something in a similar fashion. Helen had good news, but of course she couldn't guarantee things as the future has been changed the moment she stepped into this timeline. While they were talking Helen secretly took a few glances at him and Zonya. As perceptive as they were, they noticed this but didn't say anything. It was clear that she still needed some time to adapt seeing them again. After a while the night slowly broke in and Broly told the others to gather in the training chamber. As long as Helen was around, he would use her to adapt to go against someone stronger. It would be too much of a waste to ignore this perfect sparring partner. While fighting her after he first woke up, he noticed that his body somewhat remembered how Cacus used the energy in his body. He now wanted to try not to actively guide his energy but let his body do it for him. With this he was able to slightly imitate Cacus' usage. Although he was far from using his legendary state to go against Super Scion Blue, every step would take him closer. For months later Broly stepped out of the training chamber. He took a shower and went outside the ship. He walked towards what looked like a bigger version of the time machine from Trunks. He was surprised to see Dispo and Maji Keo as he knew them from the Tournament of Power. They were contestants from the other universes. They looked rather relaxed as they talked with the others in the group. Kana, Aaliyah and Zongya were saying their goodbyes. Helen saw Broly approach them. She walked up to him and without saying anything, she hugged him. Thanks dad, she smiled at him before turning around. Suddenly Broly appeared in front of her and slammed his fist inside her stomach. Her body was instantly sent flying parallel to the ground. Before she could rebalance herself, she was sent into the air. A key beam followed her and detonated on impact. Smoke covered the sky. A blue shimmer could be faintly seen through the air. Helen turned Super Scion Blue to block the attack. She looked at her father who was standing still on the ground. She slowly landed a few meters in front of him. I will be coming to your timeline and beat you and your father up. Remember that? Of course. Helen couldn't help but smile brightly. See you around, kiddo. Broly crossed his arms as he said his goodbye. Helen gave Zongya a last hug and whispered something into her ear which caused Zongya to blush. She jumped into the time machine with Dispo and Maji Keo. The hatch closed, and the machine slowly flew into the sky before quickly vanishing from sight. Sigh. She already left so soon, 
Aaliyah said out loud. Obviously, she has a wish to be granted and her family is there and not here. Instead of talking, how about we train some more dash? Suddenly a gigantic key was being released a few thousands of kilometers away. It is already time for their appearance? Come, we have an old friend to visit. Broly shot into the distant sky. The girls quickly followed him. They were confused about who this old friend might be. Don't we have to hide anymore? Kana asked Aaliyah. Apparently not. Maybe Kakarot has returned. Maybe. But this key, where did I sense it before? Kana's eyes suddenly flashed. She accelerated and quickly caught up to Broly. They quickly arrived at a wasteland with rock formations similar to where Broly and Helen had fought. They looked down as they saw a figure kill some people who appeared to be soldiers. Aaliyah and Zongya joined them shortly afterwards. On the side was a big circular spaceship with legs piercing into the ground, but this was not the first what caught their eyes. They saw two frost demons talking to a guy with purple hair. Suddenly the guy powered up and his key started rising. The dead bodies on the ground were thrown into the sky by the rising energy. The earth trembled and broke apart. The guy's hair pointed into the sky. His body began to shine in a golden hue and his hair turned golden. A super scion? Aaliyah and Kana were shocked. They couldn't believe there was another super scion beside them. Although Kana was shocked, she quickly focused on one of the frost demon, whose body was partly replaced by metal components. She squinted her eyes for a moment before she asked Broly. Is that Frost Demon Frisia? Yes. Next to him is his father King Cold and the guy is called Trunks. He's half Scion, half human. Broly seemed to be pondering about something as he said that. Kana's eyes flashed but she didn't move. They hovered in the air as they saw the spectacle on the ground. They saw how Frisia shot a key blast at Trunks, but it didn't do anything to him. Frisia flew into the sky and created a sun made out of key and threw it at Trunks, who was easily able to receive it. Frisia followed up with a key blast and detonated the sun. Trunks escaped out of harm's way and started an attack further away. Frisia jumped out of the way and Trunks headed straight at him with his sword ready to swing. Kana go and have some fun, Broly said as he saw the fight progress to this state. Understood. Kana disappeared from the sky and reappeared between Trunks and Frisia. Trunks was already mid-swing and couldn't stop anymore, while Frisia was frozen in place out of shock. Kana stopped the sword by pinching the blade, while kicking Frisia right in the stomach, sending him crashing into the ground. Trunks was shocked as he realized that he couldn't move the sword as it was clutched by this mysterious woman. She finally let go and Trunks distanced himself quickly. He observed her. He widened his eyes as he saw something wrapped around her waist. A tail? You are a scion. Kana didn't bother with him as she looked down at the crater. As soon as she saw something moving, she disappeared from Trunks' sight. Suddenly, screams of pain could be heard from the ground. No, this wag can't be happening. You filthy monkey. Aya. Trunks was completely flabbergasted. How is this possible? How could a scion be so strong? And why wasn't she ever mentioned by mom? He looked at the ground and saw how she broke every limb and bone inside the remaining body of Frisia. It wasn't a fight. Frisia was just straight up beaten to death. Trunks saw how King Cold was preparing to attack from the sidelines. Just as he was about to move, a 2.2 meter tall guy appeared right in front of him. Without saying anything, he kneed Trunks right in the stomach. Trunks couldn't even scream, as his breath was completely gone. He bent forward, while holding his stomach. Kana finally killed Frisia by ripping off every limb and incinerated his limbless body. King Cold didn't underestimate the Scion anymore, and a humongous key started pouring out of his body. His body started shining brightly. A huge explosion created a giant crater and slowly revealed a tall figure in the middle with white skin and purple crystals on his shoulder and head. He had transformed into what resembles the final form of Frisia. Broly was surprised as he wouldn't have thought that King Cold had a final form. In the series he was only shown with that previous body until he was easily killed by Trunks. He looked at King Cold with his life force vision and saw that it was rapidly depleting. It seems like this transformation was putting immense pressure on his body and shortens his lifespan by quite a bit. No wonder King Cold hoped that Trunks' strength came from his sword with the rate his lifespan is decreasing. He will be dead soon even if Trunks hadn't killed him. Broly felt the key King Cold released and only shook his head. After killing Frisia Kana's attention was solely on King Cold. Her eyes suddenly changed into a green color and her hair turned golden. What another one? King Cold was shocked. Kana disappeared and directly pierced King Cold's chest with her arm. 
She didn't use a key blade but just drove her arm in like it was nothing. The difference in strength was obvious. How could this be? How are you so strong? Cough. Cough. King Cold was spewing out blood as he shakily backed away. Strong? I am not strong, you are just pathetically weak. You just barely even hit a billion. After saying that Kana waved her arm and directly looped off King Cold's head. It hadn't touched the ground before it was pulverized by a key attack. The body was quickly disposed of as well. She then turned back into her base. Trunks couldn't believe what was happening. The key the female scion shortly released as a super scion was too high for him to grasp. Another super scion appeared out of nowhere. If he guessed right, she could easily kill those androids that terrorized him for years. He readjusted himself after being hit and looked at the guy who was looking at the slaughter. Trunks couldn't help but feel that this man was even stronger than the woman. Even though he didn't release any energy. The man looked at him and grinned. Trunks felt like he would die a torturous death after seeing that grin. Suddenly another two women appeared beside the man. At this point Trunks was already sweating buckets. He just couldn't understand who these people were and where they came from. He felt like an animal in the zoo as he was being observed. Zhangya yawned, while Aaliyah observed Trunks. Why is Broly staring at him so intensely? Does he hide more power but why would he be hit so easily? Aaliyah thought. So, this is future Trunks, he is smaller than expected. Wait, I am over two meters now of course Aichi is small for Maine. Who are you? Trunks unconsciously took a step back. He, I am Broly. Without a doubt that was Frisia. Vegeta said in disbelief as he saw how that female scion completely obliterated one of the key signature they felt. Not only Frisia but that other brute with the huge amount of key was taken care of as well. They are both dead. Tenshinhen spoke out obviously shocked as well. Wow, Goku got really strong. He only took a second to take out these guys. Bulma exclaimed happily as she couldn't see such long distance. That wasn't Goku, but they appear to be super scions. Without saying anything else the group took off towards the mysterious group that took out Frieza and his company. Yamcha had to take Bulma with her as she couldn't fly. Vegeta and the other Z fighters quickly approached them. Still a distance away they stopped as there seemed to be another conflict in the group that took out Frieza. Suddenly another figure seemed to materialize right next to the other five. The Z fighters immediately recognized the figure as Son Goku. They didn't know why but Son Goku had suddenly appeared out of nowhere. They quickly approached him and landed a few tens of meters away. They only now realized that the other five seemed to be split into two groups. On one hand was a young guy with purple hair and a sword on his back and the other were three women with a 2.3 meter tall man in the middle. The guy with the purple hair backed away from the other group towards Goku and the other Z fighters as he was holding his stomach. Unbelievable. Other scions. Vegeta blurted out as he saw the tails on their waists of three out of the other group. The other one seemed to be some kind of alien he hadn't seen before. Vegeta was gritting his teeth from the moment they came in. He had felt being suppressed. Although they didn't leak any energy, he knew that they were still leagues above him. He looked at the Super Scion woman, but it seemed like she wasn't even the strongest out of the group. He had already heard that when he was out in space, tremendous amount of key was being released but even after searching he and the group couldn't find the suspects, but now they finally have shown themselves. The tall guy stepped forwards and began to speak. I am Broly, the legendary Super Scion. Vegeta felt suppressed as this Broly guy spoke. This wasn't only for Vegeta but for Goku and Trunks as well. Broly smiled as he saw the reaction of the group. You Scions, what do you want here? Goku shouted out. Goku couldn't tell but he was feeling anxious just speaking with Broly. He, we just want the Dragon Balls. Make a wish and off we go. Broly's eyes suddenly turned yellow and Trunks and Goku panicked as they immediately turned Super Saiyan. Their body was covered in golden light as their hair and eyes changed. Goku looked surprised at Trunks. He wouldn't have thought there was another Super Saiyan, and he just looked like him. He refocused his attention on Broly. Should I take that you won't allow us? Broly's figure suddenly flashed and instantly appeared in front of Goku. He backhanded him straight in the face, sending him off into the distance. Trunks couldn't even follow with his eyes until Goku was already hit. He only saw a shadow approach him from the corner of his eye and he was smacked away hard as well. Broly had already returned into his base form, but he was still leagues above Goku and Trunks who only had turned Super Saiyan recently. There was no way for them to last even a second against Broly's base. If he became serious. Broly let his eyes wander over the Z Fighters and stopped at Vegeta. He approached Vegeta and stood directly in front of him. 
He gave props to Vegeta whose body was shaking but still stood his ground and only breathed heavily as he looked Broly in the eye. Broly smiled at him and spoke out. And who are you little one? Are you lost, little child? Vegeta was gritting his teeth. He would not take this humiliation. I am Vegeta the prince of all science. Haya Vegeta's key suddenly flared up. It even had a tinge of gold inside. He jumped off the ground and punched at Broly's chin with all his might. Vegeta only felt like his fist punched against an unmovable object. His fist was instantly broken. You want to be prince of a science with your pathetic strength? You don't even look like a scion. Where the hell is your tail? Don't freaking embarrass yourself. Broly grabbed Vegeta by the hair and kneed him in the face. Vegeta instantly fainted and was thrown away to the side. The other Z-Fighters were sweating as they saw Vegeta being easily disposed of. They knew they were nowhere near this guy's power. Trunks and Goku finally rushed back. Trunks swung his sword, but it was blocked before he could get near Broly. Kana pinched the sword like she did earlier. She smirked at Trunks before sweeping him off his feet and Midair kicked him, sending him through multiple boulders. Goku was blocked as well by Aaliyah who instantly pummeled him into the ground. The Z-Fighters were worried as they saw their only hope, the strongest of them, being easily dominated and beaten up. Goku and Trunks couldn't stand a chance. Even as Super Saiyans, they weren't even able to scratch those Saiyans in front of them. Piccolo and the others dared no to make a move as they looked warily at Broly. However, Broly paid attention to Goku who was preparing for an attack. Don't interrupt him, I want to see that attack. Broly told Aaliyah telepathically. All right. Goku first stretched out his hand to the front and brought his cupped hands to his side. Kami. Ki was being concentrated in his hands into a single point. Hami. A white bluish sphere formed in his hand and its light shone between his hands. Goku's vein on his forehead almost popped as he was putting all his strength into this attack. ha a a -wa -ya. Goku thrusts his hands forward and a streaming, powerful beam of energy shot out. It burned the air and incinerated everything in its path. Aaliyah calmly hold up her hand. The moment the wave made contact with her hand she was being pushed backwards. Her legs created trenches on her way. She suddenly stopped and flicked her hand upwards. The beam was redirected into the air before it exploded into a grand fireball. H-A-A ha. She, she just blocked it with one hand. Goku couldn't believe that his attack was blocked so effortlessly. Not a bad move. Aaliyah commented while looking at Goku with indifferent eyes. That sent shivers down Goku's back. Trunks dashed out of the rubble in his base form. He was bleeding all over his body as was Goku. They looked at Broly who seemed to be the leader of the group. With your strength it shouldn't be a problem to defeat us in seconds, if I sensed your energy right previously. What do you want? Yes I could. Why? Do you want to give up already? I already told you what we are here for. Hee <laughs> hee. I am not giving up. It is just that I don't feel any evil intent from you. Broly grinned at them. You are not ripe yet. In ten years, I will come back to this planet with the intent to kill everyone on it. You better prepare a few warriors to entertain us otherwise I will blow up this planet. Mwahahaha. As soon as he said that Broly flew into the sky and took off towards his ship. The girls quickly followed him back. After Broly disappeared the Z-Fighters fell onto their knees. They were sweating and breathing heavily. They were exhausted even though they weren't even fighting. I think we now know who released that key a while ago. Krillin said out of breath. Yeah, I could feel that the other's key from the group seemed also be the same we felt a few months ago, even though they heavily suppressed it. Goku and Trunks laid down on the ground and slowly recovered. They weren't badly hurt but just extremely fatigued. Trunks was confused by this event. He never heard of the scion named Broly or any of his group. They were just too strong. They were even more frightening than the androids. They completely toyed with him. He couldn't even retaliate. Krillin asked Goku what bothered him since a while ago. Goku, how were you able to arrive here so quickly? Ah, it is called instant transmission. I learned it on a planet called Yardrat. After he explained everything Goku spoke to Trunks. So, and who are you? Ah, I came here for something else. I need to tell you something Goku. While Trunks told Goku about the oncoming android threat in three years and gave Goku the medicine for the heart virus, Broly was pondering. He couldn't understand why Trunks was still able to come here. Shouldn't Helen's arrival split off the timeline into a new one? Trunks should have gone to the timeline where Helen didn't come back in time, right? Wait, did Trunks even appear in her timeline? If my soul entered the main timeline shown in the series and didn't create a different timeline by doing so, 
then it would explain why Trunks would be able to travel either to this or Helen's timeline, but why did he enter this one instead of Helen's? And why wouldn't me being here create a different timeline? Ah shit my brain hurts. Damn it. Let's just get this wish for now. Broly went ahead and gathered the Dragon Balls. He put them on the ground a bit to the side. He outstretched his arms and said the following words. Come forth, Shenlong, and grant us our wish. The Dragon Balls started blinking, and the sky was darkened by thunderclouds. A bright golden light beam suddenly shot out the Dragon Balls and swirled into the sky. The light beam seemed to solidify before breaking off and revealing the green scales beneath it. A majestic aura was released by the gigantic dragon. Shenlong. The Z fighters saw Shenlong being summoned in the distance. Shouldn't we stop them? Krillin asked concerned. Even if we tried, it would only take one of them to stop us all. Tenshinhen answered. Although he was frustrated that he was helpless against them, it only made him strive for more power. Vegeta after he woke up and saw that even the two Super Scions were beaten up. He scoffed at Goku. Hmph. <laughs> Even you, a super scion, was nothing against them. There is always someone stronger than you and I will become someone like that as well. Vegeta quickly took off and headed towards Bulma's spaceship. He wanted to get off this planet and train in outer space to become a super scion. But he wouldn't stop there. He would become the strongest super scion that ever existed until he can squash that scion named Broly like an ant. He didn't care about the androids that were supposedly going to come in a few years. They would only be stepping stones for him. Oh boy, don't worry Trunks, he will come back. And I promise I will beat these androids up, Goku reassured. Shortly afterwards Trunks took off with his time machine and the Z fighters resolved themselves to train as hard as they can to prevent the android threat and to prevent Broly from destroying the planet in 10 years. Goku now had a new goal, he had to become a lot stronger to even fight Broly evenly. He was especially conscious about the fact that Broly said he was the legendary Super Saiyan and showed no reaction to his or Trunks Super Saiyan which would only mean one thing. Broly was capable to become a Super Saiyan as well, maybe even his followers were able to do the same thing, but they didn't even bother to use it against them. The disparity between him and them was just too big. He also needed other people to alleviate the pressure off him. If the group was only remotely in the same level, he would need other warriors to fight with him. He wouldn't believe that they weren't going to become stronger as well. Goku looked at his son and decided to train him. We have three years to get strong enough for the androids and for Broly we have ten years. This will be a busy decade. Piccolo commented. A dragon with brown antlers, red eyes, long whiskers and a long serpentine body hovered midair and stared down at the people who summoned him. Thee who have gathered the seven dragon balls, speak forth thy wish. I shall grant thee any one wish. Shenlong's voice boomed as he spoke. I wish for the soul of Kakis to be removed from my body. Shenlong's eyes flashed for a second. Thy wish cannot be fulfilled as the soul thee speak of is not present. Wish for something else. Oh great, just double checking. Now for my wish. I wish for us and our spaceship to be teleported to the planet New Namek where the Namekians now reside on. This wish is easy. Shenlong's red eyes started glowing and in an instant Broly and company were teleported to another planet. Ai ai, couldn't you have told us that we are going to another planet? Kana said as she almost face-bombed the ground. I already told you all that we are going to use the Namekian's Dragon Balls. You didn't tell us that it was on another planet. She rebuked. Oh. By the way the Namekians live on another planet. Alright. Let's go collect them. Broly picked out the Dragon Radar and pressed the button and the Dragon Balls were shown on the screen. Broly sighed out in relief as he didn't know if it was already time for them to be restored. After all they had wished to be brought here only a few months back. He saw three Dragon Balls flying to one direction. Fortunately, the other Dragon Balls were also located there. It seems like they were prepared to make another wish. Okay, this way. Broly said as he flew in the direction where the Dragon Balls were gathering. It didn't take them long to arrive. They were even faster than the Dragon Balls that were already heading to this direction. Broly looked down from the sky to see a village with white circular homes built pretty much screamed Namekian at least according to Broly's understanding. He saw many of them working on farms. Although Namekians were able to sustain themselves with only water, they could still eat solid food for nutrients. Broly noticed that the Dragon Balls were hid in a house in the middle of this tiny village. He directly landed in front of its door and tried to open it. It was locked but Broly noticed it too late and accidentally broke through the door. He looked at the door in his hand and leaned it against the wall outside. 
He went inside and looked at the big dragon balls placed on a pillow. He suddenly heard commotion outside and figured that he should at least talk to them, since he can't get his wishes if he doesn't speak the language. When he thought about it, he was still amazed that most races in this universe evolved into speaking the same language with only few exceptions. Language is after all intertwined with culture. Maybe someone wished for a common language with the Super Dragon Balls, but there are still races who speak other languages. Another idea would be the Kais decided the language, they are after all responsible for creating life and supervising it. It is entirely possible that they just passed down their language as the basic. Namikians were then probably influenced by Zalama who formed the Super Dragon Balls. Thankfully I learned it early on in the three three years I spent in the pod. Broly stepped out and saw a few warrior Namikians ready to fight. The other Dragon Balls also already arrived. Whoa whoa we are not here to fight. We already know what you are after. You want the Dragon Balls. Yes but we want to ask nicely, it is not like we can force you to make a wish that you don't want to, right? Since we don't speak Namikian, ask nicely? Yeah right, you are just brutes that greed after them. The Namikian pointed at the door, which took the worst timing to fall and splintered even further. Look how about we tell you what wishes we want and you decide if they are okay or not. Doesn't that sound fair? Broly spread out his arms and took a step forward. This triggered a warrior and he stomped the ground, shooting towards Broly with a hand drawn back, ready to throw a punch. Broly's eyes flashed and the Namekian instantly fainted as he crashed strengthless into the ground and slid just in front of Broly's feet. You really shouldn't act without thinking. I already have bad experience with people who needlessly want to fight me. His voice got a notch deeper as he said that. The kids already scrammed away and were shivering behind the adults. We don't want to use the harsh method now, do we? Broly let his gaze wander around. Perchance, he saw Dend watching them from afar. Why don't we just take the Dragon Balls? Helen left us all kind of stuff on our computer on the ship. I think I saw that the Namekian language was included. Aaliyah suddenly told Broly telepathically. What for real? Wait, what else was on that? Mostly techniques that we didn't master yet, languages and about Akari and transformation as a whole. <clears throat> Alright, go make sure it is there. Until you found it, I am going to talk to these Namekians. Aaliyah only nodded and headed into the distant where they left the ship. An elderly Namekian suddenly walked out of the group. Broly assumed that this was Mori or whatever his name was. Hello visitors. I am Mori the Grand Elder. There is no reason for violence. Of course, there isn't. It was your clan member who attacked us first. Yes, and you were kind enough to let him live. It is just that our original planet was just destroyed by the Emperor Frisia, and we are all still on the edge with newcomers. No hard feelings. How about we talk about the wishes we want to fulfill? Of course, please go ahead. But I hope you won't be mad if there are wishes we don't agree with. Certainly. First, I want to revive the Scions that died during the attack from Frisia. Since I know that the power of the Dragon Balls is limited, we are fine with just reviving my girlfriend's family. Second would be to unlock our raw potential and third, before he could state his last wish Aaliyah was already coming back. She landed beside him and gave him a tablet. The atmosphere became tense again as the Namekians could feel that this would be something that would rebalance their worth. Good. Broly looked at the Namekians and gave them a grin. What I hold in my hands is a translator from the common language into yours. Broly turned the tablet for them to see. The Namekians widened their eyes in shock. This would mean he wouldn't need them anymore as he could just get his wishes granted by his own. My third wish would be the ability to create Dragon Balls on my own. You want to create your own Dragon Balls? Yes, got a problem with that? My power far exceeds yours. If I am able to create Dragon Balls, they would be far more powerful than yours. I, that is impossible. It is race-specific trait. Not even all of us can create Dragon Balls. If you want that kind of power, Paranga would only be able to give it to you by heavily changing your body. Broly squinted his eyes for a second. He could sense that this wasn't a lie and he didn't want to mess with his Scion body. Sigh. Already figured that wouldn't be that easy. Hmm. According to your wishes, it really doesn't seem that you have any ill will. Alright, you can use the Dragon Balls. But Mori. A warrior sounded out. No buts. With his strength and with that translator, he would easily be able to just take them by force and make his wish. But instead he presents us his third wish. The Namekians hesitated at first but then gave in and handed over the remaining Dragon Balls. By the way... I thought the Namekian Dragon Balls were only able to revive one person at a time. Yes, that used to be the case but in the time we spent here I had modified it a bit. 
It shouldn't be able to revive large numbers of people, but a few shouldn't be a problem. You just have to word your wish in a way that a number of revivals is seen as one wish. Nice. All right, let's do this. Dend if you would be so kind and translate it for Broly. For Broly. Okay, Elder Mori. They put the dragon balls together and summon Paranga. Takraput pop Paranga pupirit paro. Like the earth's dragon balls the sky darkened and a light beam shot out into the sky. The only difference that the dragon was not as slim. Instead a dragon with a muscular upper body and arms came out. Instead of legs it had a slithery tail which ended in the dragon balls. He also had large spikes on his shoulders and had horns on his head. Thou who hast gathered the seven dragon balls. I shall grant thee any three wishes. All right first wish. Revive the family of Kana who have died after Planet Vegeta's explosion, then started translating the wish. Understood. I shall accept. Paranga's eyes glowed and suddenly four people appeared on the open place. Kana looked at them and her eyes started tearing up as she quickly ran to them and gave them all a big hug. I have returned their destroyed body to its original state and brought them here as a special free service. Oh, nice. Thanks a lot. Broly looked at the crying family, who were hugging each other in tears, and couldn't help but smile. All right, next wish. I wish for our raw potential to be unlocked. I shall grant you this wish. Paranga's eyes started glowing again, and Broly suddenly felt how something was opened up in his body. It was a weird sensation as new energy flowed through his body. It was like a limiter being released and he was able to have excess to power he didn't know was there. The last one. I wish for all the origin crystals to be teleported here. It is no good. It exceeds my power to move even one. Then how about me being able to tap into Ultra Instinct? It is no Gudash well figured. Then the ability to regenerate any body part. This is possible, but I can't do it without changing the genetics of thy body. Okay, forget about that. Come on, Broly, think. Do you guys have any wishes? Broly looked at Kana who happily shook her head. Aaliyah only smiled but stayed quiet. Don't you want to know about the curse of you science or just lift it? Zangya asked. I don't know what the curse is, so I won't lift it, and since it seems to be from a long time, it isn't something urgent. Besides, I have another source for knowledge. After that, Zongya stayed quiet and looked into the distance disinterested. How about reviving Cherry, my mother? Broly asked Den to translate. This should be, it is no good. Another power than the other world had claimed her soul. What? She isn't in the other world. All right, please revive the family members from Goku. Raditz his brother and Bardock the father of son Goku. The Namekians looked at him in disbelief and Dend was stunned at the thought that this group was connected to their savior. Ah finally. I mean thy wish is easy. Oh god damn it. Suddenly a scion with hair going to his back of the knee, who was utterly confused about what was happening, appeared. I hast returned his destroyed body to its original state and moved him here as an apology for my incapability to fulfill thy original wishes. But the one named Bardock is unable to be brought back as neither his soul nor his body resides in this universe. Thy wishes has been granted. Farewell. After fulfilling the wishes the dragon balls flew high into the sky and scattered in different cardinal directions. Broly was speechless at the shamelessness from Paranga. He just quickly buggered off. Hey Raditz. I am Broly you are going to follow me. Jine probably has a word with you. My mother is still alive? Broly didn't bother saying anything more and turned towards the Namekians. All right, since we got what we came for, it is time for us to leave. Thanks for the translation. Oh, and sorry about the door. After saying that Broly flew into the sky towards his spaceship, but in the corner of his eye, he saw Raditz struggling to keep up, even though they weren't even flying fast. Are you for real? The gravity of New Namek was about 12 times of planet Earth. It was only minimally higher than their home planet Vegeta. It was quite pathetic that Raditz couldn't even overcome this much. Broly flew back to Raditz and dragged him with him by his collar. Shortly afterward, they arrived at their spaceship and embarked it. After opening the door and stepping inside, Broly gave them a short trip around the ship. He showed them their rooms and other necessities. They only had five rooms on this ship, so some of them had to share a room. The family from Kana were friendly. They were especially friendly after hearing that Kana and he were in a relationship. If he didn't know and couldn't see their tail, he would have assumed that they were a normal kind of human family. Broly went into the cockpit and gave in coordinates. I thought my mother wanted to talk to me. Where is she? Raditz suddenly came in and asked. On that planet, 
He pointed at the planet on the panel, which coordinates he just typed in. We will be traveling for a few months, so before we arrive, I am going to train you at least to the level where you won't die when you set foot on that planet. Raditz seemed to be contemplating about something. You really got your butt hooped by Kakarot. Broly grinned at Raditz. You! Ha ha ha! Look at you! Killed by your own little brother. I will let you know that Kakarot is able to go Super Scion. What? He a Super Scion? Impossible! Believe me or not, but he became powerful enough to kill Frisia. Gulp. So, you better start training, otherwise you will never catch up. Raditz's eyes were wavering. Broly knew that Raditz was a bit of a coward, but this is just too discouraging to watch. What the hell are you waiting for? Get your butt in the training chamber. In the next months, I will beat you up every day. With a wave of his hand, Raditz was sent flying out of the room against the floor wall. The wall didn't even have a scratch on it, but Raditz already coughed out blood. Broly looked back at the planet where the other Scions went. Their reunion had been delayed through Helen, but now it wouldn't take long until he would set foot in his soon-to-be glorious kingdom. After he turned on the autopilot, he turned around and left for the training chambers. Through a window of another room, he was able to see Kana training her family inside. In another Aaliyah and Zhangya were going at it with increased settings. He finally walked in the one chamber where Raditz was looking at the panel for the room. I wouldn't press that. Those needles would probably instantly kill you. Broly shoved Raditz out of the way and pressed the button for increased gravity. Broly looked at him with his life force vision and started giving him basic exercises to perform. The only reason why he wanted to train Raditz was to see if the potential to become one of the strongest scions was a family thing. Besides, even the maximum settings would only be normal training for him. He would need much harsher environment to yield results. Instead of training his body, he used meditation to increase his ki and used his extra life force to strengthen his body. He also used the time to learn the techniques Helen had left behind and only on occasions would he give Raditz some pointers. Broly woke up at 5 o'clock in the morning or what he set as the morning, since they were currently speeding through space. He carefully moved Kana's head from his chest to the pillow and slowly wriggled his way out. He then went inside the bathroom, took a shower and brushed his teeth before heading towards the training chamber. Arriving at the training rooms, he instantly saw one with the lights on. He directly went to it and saw Raditz training inside. It has been only been a few weeks and Raditz was training like crazy. In the beginning Broly still had to beat him out of the bed but especially after his strength grew exponentially, he became obsessed with training. Raditz was now training at 50x times gravity, doing push-ups, sit-ups and other basic bodyweight training. Broly went inside quietly and waited for a second before stomping the ground. His body shot out and directly headed for Raditz, who was mid-push-up. Broly kicked at his head. Raditz saw this and pushed himself from the ground. He instantly somersault backwards and was barely able to escape the kick. Broly immediately followed up and started cornering Raditz. Although Raditz improved in the last weeks, the results in the battles against Broly was still the same, which frustrated Raditz a bit. Of course, he didn't know how high Broly's power actually was. Raditz just felt like Broly's power was like a bottomless ocean. After a while of being beaten up, Raditz was allowed to rest. After these short spars, he would always be beyond exhausted as he was always pushed to his limits. Today Broly brought out the weights for Raditz and showed him how to lift them properly, so Raditz wouldn't immediately break his back. Raditz was listening carefully and absorbed everything like a sponge. By now he knew that everything Broly said would be of value and help him increase his strength. It was not an exaggeration to say that he felt his strength rapidly grow day by day. After showing Raditz his new workout plan, Broly went ahead and meditated. Thereafter he would give Helen's note a look for techniques he wanted to master. For example, there were things like the Kai Kai, the teleportation used by gods through magic, he already mastered or Kaoken from the North Kai. To be honest he, Kana, Aaliyah and Zhangya could have just teleported everyone to the planet they were heading to as they had the coordinates but that would have directly killed Raditz and the other ones since they were too weak. Instead they traveled with their spaceship while training them. There were many other techniques written down but what interested him the most was God Key. God Key is a special type of key that is far superior to regular key. It was a key with a much higher purity than the regular key and therefore couldn't easily be sensed by normal people. In the time when he had sparred numerous times with Helen, he had asked her for God Key. But the answer was disappointing. She said that she was unable to directly transfer God Key to him as it was too burdening for the body. He first didn't want to believe it as he was pretty confident in his body but after injecting a sliver of god key inside his palm, he felt like his hand was about to be crushed. 
Since it was a foreign energy, he was unable to absorb it, making it only harmful. She told him that he could perform the God Ritual. The God Ritual is performed by six good-hearted scions, who infuse their energy into one of them. That person would gain the scion transformation which grants the user God Key. Another way for him to gain God Key was to convert his regular Key into Godly Key. He needed to purify his Key, but to do so he would need a massive amount of Key. The amount wasn't really a problem as he was able to generate Key naturally, but he also needed control. From what Helen told him, God Key would only be accessible to use if he was able to fight with his regular Key without leaking any of it, which would prove his mastery of control over Key. Since God Key was a very potent energy and not easily controlled, if he gathered it without the ability to do so, he could end up severely injuring or even crippling himself. For now, she advised him against it as he was still growing and becoming more powerful, which would make his control more difficult. Additionally, his Super Scion transformation makes his key more violent and according to Helen this made his God Key more difficult to control than others. In all his best shot at God Key would be the ritual since it gave him easy to control God Key that he could absorb. This would strengthen his body and give him a taste of God Key, making his future development with this key easier. Now the problem was to find another Super Scion to perform the ritual with. Now he couldn't really ask Kakarot for help. Could he? He didn't even know if he was considered good-hearted himself, but he didn't really bother with that as he would know after he had performed the ritual. So, for now he focused in the other techniques and training Raditz to become a Super Scion. Although he wouldn't say Raditz was good-hearted either, at least he should theoretically have the highest chance to become a Super Scion. Maybe if he arrived on the new planet, there would be already new Super Scions to greet him. Raditz took a short break from training and saw how easily Broly was hovering midair. He didn't say it out loud, but he had major respect for Broly. Especially after witnessing him accidentally leak a huge amount of ki. The pressure nearly crushed him which only awed Raditz even more. At first, he had disliked him as he was constantly beating him up. Even Vegeta and Nappa weren't as harsh as him. They only had ignored him and didn't seem to want him dead. This was how he initially perceived it, but after some time, he recognized the worth of these spars. With every spar he had gained tremendously, and the only limit would be Broly's strength and his own willingness to improve. With every occasional pointer, Raditz's growth would be accelerated, and his mistakes were corrected. Raditz already saw Broly as his master, who taught him everything. This style of life would continue for another month until Raditz and everyone in the family of Kana were able to easily withstand 100x times gravity. Broly had gathered them. All right, after this short period of time, you improved by a lot. And I think it is time for us to get to the Scion's new home planet. You mean we are finally going to teleport there? Zangya asked excited. Although they all had spent years training inside the ship previously, it didn't mean they preferred it over walking on a planet and breathing fresh air from nature. Yes. All right, prepare yourself. I don't want anyone to throw up. Broly kneeled on one of his knees and put his hand on the ground. What do you mean with teleport? Raditz asked confused. Broly closed his eyes as he concentrated his magic power as prepared to use Kai Kai. After a moment they all felt their surroundings distort and in an instant the scenery outside of the window changed. A huge green bluish planet was suspended in space. It was a beautiful planet with perfect conditions for the Scions to live on. Aaliyah sent a message towards our main ship. I want to know where they had built up our base. Of course, she went up to the panel and typed away. She had quickly sent the message and now they waited for a response. Weirdly nothing came back even after a few minutes. Their new king was sending them a message how could they just ignore it? Only after 30 minutes they received a message about the coordinates for them to land. Aaliyah quickly typed in the coordinates and the ship directly headed there. It didn't take a minute for the ship to land right at a small clearing inside a jungle. After landing they all stepped outside and cloaked their ship. They waited for a moment before a scion who wore a camouflaged uniform ran towards them. He saluted and greeted him as King Broly. Kana's family and Raditz were shocked to find out that Broly was actually the new king of the Scions. Lead the way, Broly ordered and they all followed the Scion through the jungle. After ten minutes they arrived at a cave entrance. Broly furrowed his eyebrows. You have built your base underground? We had built our original base in a big clearing. But after we were attacked, we were forced to retreat. Forced to retreat? Are you kidding me? Broly growled. Yes sir, it is true. After a few weeks we have landed, our base was attacked by a group of ten. Their strength was formidable and there were too many. Aes and Taro weren't able to handle them all. Hmm. 
Broly didn't notice it himself, but everyone saw how he smiled after hearing that Aze and Taro weren't able to handle them. They all went inside the cave. It slightly declined as they were led further inside. After a while, their ship could be seen in the center of a gigantic hall. Unexpectedly, the entire hall was been brightened by lights. There were numerous scions moving boxes of food or trees around. It was rather lively. Jain could be seen standing with a notepad giving orders to the scions with the food supply. The scions that they passed showed an excited and happy expression after they saw Broly and immediately saluted. On the side were already a few houses being built. It didn't look like much, but it was enough for scions who would spend most of their time training or going out to fight. It wasn't surprising to find a few coming drowsily out of the training room near the ship. Evidently, those had been sleeping inside. It was a good thing that they integrated gravity chambers that could be detached from the ship. Although Broly had requested from some scientists to develop Hoi Poi capsules so they could store exponentially more, the invention failed in the end. Seeing how the boxes were transported, he only now remembered. He made a mental note for himself to visit Earth again soon. He walked up to Jine. Hey, what's up? Jine turned her head and immediately saw him. He was not to be overseen with his height after all. Broly. She ran up to him and gave him a big hug. He turned to Aaliyah and Kana and gave them a hug as well. She saw Zhangya standing next to Aaliyah and Kana. Jine didn't recognize but she gave her a hug anyway. You are so pretty. Zhangya was a bit flustered by this welcome. Titch thanks. Jine turned to the bigger group and saw a man with long hair going down his back. He wore a white version of the Frisia's army armor. He was trying to avoid her gaze. His eyes were filled with shame. Jine's eyes widened and quickly became misty. She instantly dashed towards him and tackled him to the ground. Her wails sounded out in the hall, attracting the attention of all scions. Get back to work! Broly shouted out and released his aura. The scions quickly took off and got back to what they were doing. Raditz's eyes teared up as well as he tightly held his mom in his arm. It took them a few minutes before they were able to move inside a building. Jine was constantly wiping away her tears. It has been 25 years since she last saw her husband and sons. All this time, she didn't know if her sons were still alive. She couldn't grieve in the past years as she had to focus on being the pillar for the other science or rather it was her way with dealing with it. She would have likely broken down if she hadn't drowned herself in work. All the suppressed emotions now burst out uncontrollably. Raditz was the same. After hearing his home planet being destroyed, he hadn't had a home and family to return to. He wasn't very close to his brother or his father, but he was with Jine. Her personality made him feel welcomed. He was only a low-class scion. He was always being belittled or ignored by the other scions, but his mom was different. She loved him unconditionally, but he was too focused in fitting in. He only learned her love to appreciate only after she was gone. He was happy that he could finally see her again, but he was also ashamed of what he did. He knew that she loved him and Kakarot equally. After meeting his little brother, he didn't take care of him like Jine always told him to but tried to force him on his side. He was angry at his brother for forgetting about his family and wanted to vent his pent-up frustration on him. If he knew that it would escalate to both of them being dead, he would have never taken this approach. Broly ordered a scion to give Kana's family a house they could reside in and show them around. All the scions, after seeing his strength at the coronation, were undyingly loyal to him. They were awed by his strength and decisiveness. On top of that, he was their savior, so after receiving his order, they would do their utmost to complete it. After the mother-son duo calmed down, Raditz confessed his past action. He told her how he kidnapped Kakarot's son and tried to force him to kill off all the humans on Earth. Jine furrowed her eyebrows as she listened to her son. Of course, she was displeased, but it didn't hold on for long. Maybe it was because that she hadn't seen her son for such a long time or because she knew that Scions weren't good with showing their emotions or with words in general. He changed his name? He is now called Goku? Her eyes were filled with sadness. Her own son couldn't remember her anymore. As a mother there didn't exist much that would be more painful than that. He even has a family now. Maybe it is better this way. Seeing this, Broly couldn't help but chime in. Maybe he doesn't remember but that doesn't mean you can't get to know him now. Kakarot never had a mother figure or an older brother. Even if it is late, you guys should at least try to establish a relationship. It will make all three of you happier. You don't have anything to lose. Jine's eyes seemed to clear up a lot and a glint of determination could be seen. You are right. What kind of mother would I be if I can't even face him? Raditz also clenched his fist. 
Seems like I have to make it up to him. Only after going through a hellish training for over a month, Raditz had gained a lot of courage. Very well. Broly gave them a smile before becoming serious again. Jain, I heard we got beaten into this cave. It first seemed a bit ridiculous, considering that our average power level is around 400,000 and have two Super Scion at the top. How strong are they? Were you able to scan their power level? Jain had a troubled expression as she thought about the last few months. She started to retell the attack. After landing on a bigger clearing in the jungle, they had sent a scouter group to scour through the surroundings for potential enemies. In the few hundred kilometers around them, there didn't seem to be any threat for them. They knew that 25 years ago this planet was a taboo for the science as a power level of 50,000 was detected on it. It was a fearful strength back then, but now it wouldn't account for anything so they were naturally unafraid. It all went peacefully for over a month and started relaxing because of it. Suddenly they were attacked in the middle of the night by a group of ten. They all wore all black, which enabled them to easily blend into the night. Their clothes gave the Scions a flashback which caused an initial outbreak of panic, but seeing that they used key attack, they knew that they were just normal aliens. The Scions were infuriated and quickly started their counterattacks, but it was hardly effective. Most of them didn't even bother to defend. Even the Scions who had their strength boosted with the Black Liquid were no match for them. Only A's and Taro as Ascended Super Scions, SSJ2, were able to defeat them. But because of their number they weren't able to prevent them from stealing some of their supplies. One was even able to snatch away a gravity chamber. From then on, they repeatedly started attacking their base from all sides. After a few battles it was clear that they were after the gravity chambers, but fortunately A's and Taro were able to prevent it from happening after they found out their purpose. They couldn't stay in the jungle as they weren't as knowledgeable as their attackers. They decided to move into this cave which only had one entrance. This took off a huge burden off A's and Taro. After that, they were easily able to defend their base, but their supplies were running low. They were in a bit of a predicament. They formed a few squads to get some food, but as soon as they went out of range of A's and Taro's protection, they sustained a few casualties, but no one had voiced out to move from this planet. Although it was a viable solution as it seemed that their opponents didn't have a spaceship, they were adamant on staying. There were two reasons that they didn't. One was because it was the very first order of their new king to establish a base on this planet and they weren't willing to let it fail. Second reason was because of the speech Broly had given after he killed Rise, the traitor Scion, who tried to take over control of their headquarters. It had reminded them of who they were. They were Scions who won't run away from a challenge. While Broly was talking to Jain, Aes and Taro were informed about Broly's arrival. The two immediately called back the squads who were out, searching for supplies. Shortly after their message was sent out, they all returned. Aes and Taro commanded them to hide near the entrance and inform them if any movement was being detected. The two then went towards the building Broly and Jain were waiting. On the way they saw Daz going towards the building as well. They entered the room where Broly was together. Broly! Haha! <laughs> Good to see you! Taro shouted out as he gave Broly a hug. Hey girls! Hahaha! <laughs> Taro turned to Aaliyah and Kana and hugged them as well. Az and Daz followed suit. Daz looked at Zongya and Broly with narrowed eyes. And you are. Before Zongya or Broly could say anything, Aaliyah spoke out. This is Zongya, Broly's third girlfriend. She is the niece from the city lord. Although Broly first didn't want to, Kana and I convinced him in the end. Aaliyah said calmly with a smile. Broly and Zongya widened their eyes as they heard it and coincidentally met each other gazes. Zongya's ears turned slightly red but didn't break eye contact. Broly just returned her gaze. Des sensed that something was wrong, but decided to just let it go after seeing his daughter being so open about it. She didn't seem to be disturbed, sad or mad. So if his daughter approved of this relationship, he wouldn't say anything. He just wanted her to be happy. It is an honor. Raditz suddenly went up to Daz and greeted him. I have seen you when I was a child. You are an elite class warrior. Des only smiled bitterly. Thanks. But you should know that this title doesn't mean anything anymore. Raditz only fell silent on these words. He always admired and envied the elite class but after knowing that his little brother became a super scion, he knew that even low class scions could become unimaginably strong. Alright, let's tackle the problems we have at hand. Broly broke the silence. Aze, Taro, I heard that you fought them several times now already. How strong are they? If we go all out, Taro can handle seven of them and I only about three, A's reported. All right, show me your full strength. After saying that Broly stepped outside, back into the cave hall again. 
The others followed him outside. Go ahead. Aes and Taro flew into the sky and powered up. In an instant they became super scions, but they didn't just stop after transforming once. Their ki was rising as the stagnated air suddenly became violent and lightning appeared in their near periphery. Their strength made the earth tremble. With a ki burst, their strength alleviated to a new plateau. Their hair became thinner and spikier. They were leaking tremendous amount of power that made everyone shiver. Well for the normal scion that is. So, this is a super scion. Raditz were flabbergasted as he looked at the two hovering midair. He was shaking under the power the two were releasing. Broly on the other hand only shook his head and waved his hand. Alright that is enough. The two quickly landed and were a bit confused by his disappointed expression. You have finally reached Super Scion 2, but how come your strength is still so weak? Weak? Yes. You two can't even defeat Kana with the same transformation. Taro, you are not even half as strong as her. They widened their eyes and looked at Kana, who was looking at them smugly as she put her hands on her hips, doing a pose with her nose pointing to the ceiling. Well, considering the training Broly forced us to do in our special training chamber and the help of Helen, it is no surprise that our strength is far above theirs, Aaliyah added. It is rather surprising that they could even remotely keep up with us. But we have the same training room, Taro mumbled. And who is Helen? Broly's and Zongya's future daughter, Kana casually said out loud. Ha! Huh. The others became confused, but Broly wanted to move on. He wasn't too happy with the two slacking off so much. No wonder they have problem with some random thugs, Broly thought. He just had too high expectations for his two friends as he compared them to Aaliyah and Kana. After all, he was the main reason why the two girls became so strong in only a few years. Of course, the wish did its job as well. Anyway, let's not talk about that. Just remember to push more in your training routine. You know what? After we are done with our opponents, I will help you adjust your training. Sigh. Alright, let's just look at our opponents as sparring partners. Aaliyah and Kana, you help Aes and Taro to kill them, but don't use Super Saiyan 2. Stay in one. You would probably kill them in seconds if you don't, and that wouldn't be as beneficial for your training. Of course, if you are in a pickle, just go all out. Broly rubbed his temple. Ah, by the way, why did we have to land on that clearing anyway? Could have just told us the location of this cave. Well, we didn't want you to be attacked by them as you were landing, so we took a site a bit further away. But we can cloak ourselves? Forget it, it should be undetectable for now. How late is it? It is around 5 p.m. It still takes a while for the sun to go down. Our friends will surely attack then. Good. Then let's eat first and then get our ship. They all went towards the cafeteria to eat. So, how is the situation? A cloaked figure asked another who was looking what seemed like binoculars. They were standing far away on a mountain peak. A new ship landed a bit off their base. They left the ship in the clearing. It wasn't moved away but just made invisible. It appeared like it carried some important figures. From what I could see, they looked like experts by the way they walked. Maybe it is their reinforcement. A new ship. Good. Get the ship immediately. If it has more of those healing pills the better. You better have some results this time. Our lord gets impatient with you. The cloaked figure with the binocular in hand laughed bitterly. You know it is almost impossible to get by those two who are guarding the entrance. He packed away the binoculars before continuing. Don't worry. It is unmanned now. We will definitely get you the ship. Make it quick. Adrian. Got it. Adrian pulled back his hood and revealed his fair skin and his pointy ears. Broly would have immediately recognized him as an elf. He jumped down the mountain and quickly entered the jungle. Not deep inside he flew up a massive tree to a door embedded in the side. He opened it and revealed what seemed to be a tavern. The people inside were in a good mood as they were singing and dancing as they got drunk on their alcohol. Adrian went upstairs and entered the door at the end of the corridor. He was greeted by nine others who were tending their wounds. You are back already? Did they move out or something? A guy asked as someone looked at his wounds underneath his bandage. Another group of theirs appeared. It seems to be reinforcement. More of those damn aliens. Why the hell do they want to invade our planet? He shouted out nearly standing up before being pushed down. Don't move. I have to check your wounds first. The woman who tended him growled at him. Don't worry, we don't have to fight them, we just have to get their ship. They had left behind. The most important priority are their healing pills and then those rooms. Unbelievable. Instead of focusing on those rooms, we should just kill them all. Why doesn't the Lord just send the army? 
Another guy said viciously, You know those would only be cannon fodder. Their average soldier far exceeds the strength of ours, we have to be careful. Besides those rooms seem to be for training purposes. Our lord intends to use them to create the next elite squad. If we can't defeat them, the next generation has to bear this burden. Sigh. Let's just focus on our mission. Do it as usual, search for the healing pills, if you can't find it, go for the rooms, Adrian said as he turned around, ready to leave. Do you think it is a trap? Maybe they intentionally placed the ship there. A young woman, leaning against the wall next to the door, asked, maybe but we have to risk it. We can't enter their cave so this is our best shot. If it contains those healing pills, it will bring our lord to full strength. Then he can deal with those aliens. If we can only snatch away those rooms, we can play the long run and fight an extended war. We have to get what we can, otherwise we will be the ones exterminated this time. Lucy was still leaning against the wall next to the door. Their Captain Adrian just left through. She was thinking about the last few months since those aliens invaded their home planet. A few years back, they were invaded by another army. The soldiers then described themselves as subordinates of Lord Cooler. They were just too strong, but after waging war with them for months, the elites of their race were finally able to kill them all. Thereafter, they put all their resources together to establish an elite squad that would defend their world if one day another invasion came to be. Lucy was obviously one of them, one of the most talented females. Even before she was put into the program to become a member of this elite squad, she was a champion of her kingdom with a tender age of 16. Now a few years later she had excellent results. She was said to be the third strongest on this planet, after Adrian and their lord in his prime. She gave it her all to be the strongest she could be, not only for herself, but for her little sister as well. They were always all they had. That's why she had to leave, like her. Her sister showed an extraordinary talent, and with this new training room, she would reach unbelievable heights, but she couldn't allow this. She had been in this room, and it was horrifying. Even she or Adrian couldn't reach the upper limits of this room and the methods themselves were torturing. She had always been fighting her whole life, trying to create a safe environment for her sister. She wouldn't let her sister endure a struggle worse than hers, just to become another of her lord's pawn. The lord had already brought her sister to the military base nearby, but because Lucy had adamantly rejected them to put her into the room. Since she was one of their strongest, they couldn't just ignore her will, so they had to comply. Her sister would only do basic training for now, but she didn't know how long she would be able to keep them at bay. She couldn't understand why they all were just too stubborn to leave this planet. If the aliens want to have it so badly, then just give it to them. Her race was strong enough to establish themselves on any other planet. Since they want to stay here, then they can just do that. If she could steal the ship, she would be able to leave this planet with her sister and live somewhere far away. She could only hope that the ship would have a lot of healing pills, so Adrian would bring those pills directly to the City Lord. With Adrian out of the picture, she would have free reign. She now only needed a pilot who could control the alien spaceship, for her sister to be ready for takeoff and for the other squad members to be distracted when the time comes. She still had about half an hour, it should be enough to get her preparations done. Lucy went out of the room with determination. After half an hour the squad had assembled themselves already, only Lucy was missing. Where the hell is she? A guy with a long scar across his face growled out. As soon as his words fell, a figure rapidly approached them from the distance. Lucy landed right in front of them in full camouflaged gear like the rest. Where were you? Adrian asked. It was weird that she left right before the start of the mission. I just visited my sister, just to be sure. After all, there are new experts in their base now, right? Don't jinx it, Adrian said with a wry smile. All right, enough chatting. Let's do this. From the base of the tree, they quickly flew through the jungle. After only a few dozen minutes, they arrived a few tens of kilometers away from the clearing. They had to be cautious. Maybe the aliens had placed a few sentries here or just scouts hiding in the bushes. They were carefully scouring through the surroundings as they searched for any aliens lying in wait. Although they were careful, they were quite confident in their abilities, especially after seeing the skills of their enemies. Of course, they were strong opponents and battle-hardened, but their knowledge over this terrain was subpar compared to theirs. After another ten minutes, they were only a few kilometers away. They had already spread and were trying to surround the clearing, so they wouldn't be surprised from one side. A few minutes after approaching it further, they started to give each other signals so they would know who was in position. They imitated bird and other animal noises to make the others know. In the jungle this wouldn't draw any suspicion. Furthermore the aliens seemed to be unfamiliar with these tactics. 
After all of them were in position, one of them approached the clearing. He entered the clearing and dashed towards the middle. He seemed to crash into something after trenches in the ground appeared. They were obviously made by the ship's legs. After the ship had been described to them, they knew the rough outer layout. The figure ducked under the ship and positioned himself in the center. He straightened his back and lifted it from the ground. He quickly flew into the sky and headed straight into one direction. He was flying just over the crowns of the trees, so one couldn't easily detect him, and the ship wouldn't be obstructed by the trees. The one with the ship had flown to a small area with a small pond. He was hovering above the pond waiting. After a while Adrian, Lucy, and two other squad members had gathered again. Adrian looked around for the other members, a bit distressed. He wanted to quickly leave, he as well as the others felt ominous. From start to finish, this all went too smoothly, or was it just their imagination? Either way, it wouldn't be wrong to finish this mission as soon as possible. Suddenly they heard something seemingly falling through the air. It came from above them. Disperse! Adrian shouted and quickly shot out. He and the others distanced themselves from the pond. They looked back and saw how some things splashed into the pond and were quickly washed to the side. They looked around, waiting for their enemies to strike, but nothing seemed to happen. They looked at the things that landed in the pond and were horrified. Those weren't just some things, they were the corpses of their squad members. A twisted neck, a hole in the forehead, the head separated from the body and someone impaled by their own arms. It was a horrifying scene. These were the elites of this planet, and they died without them even noticing anything. How do you like my present? A low voice boomed above them. It sent a shiver down their spine. They felt like this voice couldn't belong to a person but a monster. They looked upwards and saw a tall figure with white trousers and a red sash. He wore golden ornaments on his limbs and his neck. He gave them a majestic and elegant feeling, but also that of a horrifying monster hiding underneath that facade. He calmly landed behind them. They were now trembling with their backs to their comrades, which gave them a haunting feeling in their back, and a monster in humanoid skin staring at them mockingly. They couldn't bring themselves to talk. They knew that they would stand no chance against him. The corpses behind them were proof enough, but what made them even more frightened was that he didn't release any pressure. Nothing was scarier than the unknown. They would probably handle it better if they were under the pressure of his key, but there was nothing of that kind. Although this was the case, they could feel how a guillotine was hovering above their neck, waiting to claim their life. I asked you a question. Why, why, yes, it's fantastic, sir. No, I mean your lord, your majesty. I didn't want to steal your ship, your godliness. I was forced dash. The one with the ship placed it in front of him and fell on his knees as he kowtowed to the alien with tears in his eyes. The monster in front of them looked at him with a disgusted expression and took out a rectangle black object and pressed on it several times. The ship suddenly appeared again. The monster went inside for a short moment and came back outside. The ship started its engines and flew into the sky. He looked at them and started speaking. I am Broly, king of the Scion race. I have heard that you killed some of my soldiers. To be honest, if you were any stronger, I would have fought it out with you by my own. But your strength barely even qualifies as an opportunity for some of my friends. Ah, there they are. One green and four golden lights shot towards them and landed directly beside King Broly. There were three beautiful women even for their race's standards and the two who had fought them for the past. Five against five. Seems fair enough. Go have some fun. Broly grinned. As soon as his word fell, his group dashed at the natives. They all had already transformed. Aes and Taro were able to fight equally with ten of them, but now each had only one opponent. The girls were even stronger in their normal Super Scion transformation than the two when going full out, which put the natives under a whole different level of pressure. Since the beginning it was clear who was winning. The invaders clearly dominated the natives in every way, be it speed, strength or techniques. They easily evaded all of their attacks and broke the natives' defenses as easily. It didn't even take half a minute for them to be covered in blood and die shortly afterwards. In the end, only two have survived so far. A guy who seemed to be the squad leader and a young woman with beautiful features that even the blood couldn't hide. With the seconds ticking away, their movements became sloppier and they sustained more injuries. A's and Taro were giving them quite the beating, but it was astonishing that they were still standing. The others who were done with their fight already returned to the side of Broly and observed the scene in front of them. All right, that is enough, Broly said. Aes and Taro immediately stopped and returned to Broly. They were smiling at the bloody figures in front of them and were still in their ascended Super Scion transformation. It was clear that those two had no intention of letting them go. 
Broly, on the other hand, was quite relaxed. He rather was hoping that they would try to escape. This whole scene wasn't a real fight for them to begin with, it would be more interesting to turn this into a hunt. But this wasn't why he had stopped them from killing them. How about a deal? After his voice fell, the two looked at him as they coughed out blood. It was clear that their current state was critical. Broly was patiently waiting for them to settle down. So he had their full attention. You see, you are just two of many. I don't really care if you lived or not. So, how about you tell me where your base is, and I may spare your life. How does that sound to you? Adrian was panting heavily as his eyes turned cold while he looked at the alien's king. You think we would make a deal with you? I will never help you. I would wrath dash before he could finish. Broly had already waved his arm and in an instant, he was carried away by a key blast. In the air, it exploded, directly incinerating Adrian's body in a flash. He didn't even have time to scream as he was killed with nothing of him to remain. Do you think the same? Broly grinned at the woman as he formed another key sphere in his hand. No, I want to live. She groaned out with all her might. She couldn't just die here. If she did, all her efforts and hopes for the future would disappear. She had to survive no matter the costs. She just wanted to return to her sister, who was waiting for her to leave this planet. She wanted to leave with her and never turn back, live a life void of fighting, void of struggling. If this meant to betray her race, leading to thousands of deaths and worse, she would do it. I have a condition. A condition? He, do you really think you are in a position to have demands? She gritted her teeth, not breaking eye contact with this monster in humanoid flesh. She knew if she just told him what he wanted, she would die without even knowing how. Even if he kept what he said, would she be able to live knowing that she could have saved her sister? I want you to spare my sister as well. I want you to promise as the king that you will let us leave safely. Broly crossed his arms and tapped on his arm with his finger. He saw the look in her eyes and knew that she wouldn't budge on the demands. He instantly knew why she was suspicious that he would just kill her afterwards. After all to them they were invaders who were here to conquer this planet. She counted on the fact that as a king, he had to keep his promises, otherwise he wouldn't be trustworthy. He noticed that the others were looking at him, waiting for his answer. Of course, she didn't know that those around him were not only his subordinates, but his friends as well. But even if she knew, it wouldn't change her demands as this was her lifeline and it was a good move. If he made a promise, he would accomplish it no matter what, but he wasn't someone who would just give out promises. Even for his master, the city lord, he didn't promise to save his niece, but just said he would try it. Now some random alien wanted his word for her safety, what a joke. He just wanted to play with them for a bit, wanted to see their reactions when they were given a choice. Broly didn't change his expression as thought about it. After contemplating for a while, he gave her a grin. All right, I promise that as the king of the Scion race, I will guarantee you a safe conduct as you leave this planet. The others widened their eyes but didn't say anything. After that, this woman called Lucy led them near their base. It was hidden underground and wouldn't easily be found by the Scions. Unbeknownst to Lucy, they were conversing mentally with each other. They had practically bombarded him with questions. Why didn't he just sense their life force? Would he really let her life? After all, she was responsible for a few Scion deaths. Indeed, he could just locate them through life force, kill them all and be done with it, but he thought about something. He had noticed through her life force that she didn't only look young but was by far the youngest of the squad they had just eliminated. She should be in her early twenties and she was already more than twice as strong as he assumed Super Perfect Cell to be. An astonishing talent dying so young on this planet without seeing the universe. It was a shame and Broly didn't care one bit. But this was a perfect opportunity. Maybe she would get lucky, learn more things and become horrifying strong. Maybe then she would give him a good spar. It was only in his desire if she becomes stronger. It would always be two less opponents for him, so intentionally creating a few by his own, perfectly aligned with his thirst for battle. She told them that she would get her sister and then show them the entrance for the base. Of course, Broly told Aaliyah, as she was the strongest, to go with her. Broly also called the warrior to his position and to prepare for the war of supremacy on this planet. It didn't take long until his little army of 300 Scions arrived at his location. After gathering, they had divided into smaller squads of five like they did in the past. They were already riled up as they saw their king and the other super scions standing at the forefront. Their blood was boiling from excitement. Only in a few moments they could vent their past month's frustrations on the natives. Lucy and what seemed to be an eight years old little girl approached Broly. They were quickly stopped by a few scions until Broly waved her in. While tightly gripping her sister's hand, 
She approached Broly. I am ready. But before you start attacking, could you lead us to the spaceship? We would rather leave early than later. Broly hesitated for a second before nodding. She showed them the entrance from a few kilometers away. It was a three-meter tall metal door, hidden in bushes and trees. After confirming it, he waved his arm and ordered for a scion to help the sisters get off this planet with a ship. He first wanted them to watch, but he didn't know their psychologies of this race. Would that kid dedicate her life for vengeance like a scion would or completely break down, becoming useless? The sister duo quickly left with the scion and it would probably a long time until they see each other again. You are more ruthless than I thought. Zhangya suddenly voiced out. What do you mean? Well, you're going to commit genocide and were tempted to let some of their kids watch as you did it. Mm. I don't care about the well-beings of my enemies. Maybe if it was individuals who committed these acts without their lord knowing, I would have spared them. But fact is that their very lord is approving and ordering these attacks. If they really didn't want to do it, they would have already rebelled against him. Besides, we don't have the resources and time. It is just too bothersome to pick out the ones who are good and willing to serve me after killing their lord and all the people supporting him. It is easier to just wipe them out. Are you sure, Broly? Aaliyah suddenly asked. About what? To wipe them out, if we kill them now it would do us really no good. Other that they attacked us with a few soldiers, they haven't gone all in for a war. Maybe we can come to another conclusion. You can't be serious. They only used these few soldiers, because they were the strongest they had. After their first attack, they must have noticed that the average of us is far stronger than theirs. It also seems there aren't too many of them, meaning if they went all out, they would suffer far more casualties or even lose the war completely. The only reason they only sent out their elites was because they were confident that those would return, besides by targeting the gravity rooms, it showed that they planned to use them. They probably want to train their soldiers with it. Yes, that may be true, but for them we are invaders. They only want to protect their home. Tell me A's. Taro had any of our soldiers contact with one of them before they attacked? Broly turned towards the two. No, sir. We were attacked without prior notice. Aze reported while Taro confirmed with a nod. Aaliyah, they were ignorant of our existence and yet attacked and stole our supplies. What if we were just here for resupplying, our fuel ran out or were just here to explore this planet? They were hostile the moment we got here without knowing our purpose. But dash Aaliyah just say it. Why are you hesitating? While the two were talking the others were listening as well. Jine and Daz had quietly joined them as well. The atmosphere was so thick one could practically cut it with a knife. The others were tense, since this was the first time someone questioned his orders and they didn't know how he would react. Previously as a king, he had only ordered them to create a base on this planet, which they didn't accomplish satisfactorily. It was a new situation but it would severely dictate how they talked to him when he was just Broly or when he was acting as their king. I, I, King Broly, I never was on planet Vegeta and was brought up with caring parents. On Perdidus we didn't go around and kill others carelessly because of conflicts. We had tried to establish alliances with other races. It was difficult with our race's temperament, but we still tried, and we succeeded. The other races may have feared us in the beginning, but in the end, we have gathered not only allies but friends. Many races started to respect us not out of fear but what good we accomplished with this strength. To exterminate a whole race because we had a conflict with them seems too hasty and cold. We have survived on Perditus until you arrived because we had relied on others. We grew stronger but if if we wipe them out now, I feel like we would revert back to what we were. Warmongers who can't do anything but destroy. Broly looked straight ahead at the entrance of the native's base as he thought about it, before he spoke out. Scions are innate warriors, who strive for battle, for a challenge. I don't think if the other races from Perditus were left out of the equations that we would have died out. Scions naturally grow from pressure. The reason we used to be so weak was because we only attacked planets we were able to conquer. That said, it would align for us to exterminate them considering our nature. Of course, that wasn't why I want them dead. The reason I wanted them dead was because it would be bothersome. They hadn't welcomed us in the past, and probably won't in the future. It is the most cost-efficient to take them out now before they gained strength and rebelled against us. It seems like I feared that they would become a threat to the Empire. I wanted to establish. No one said anything. Even the other 300 Scions became quiet as they sensed the atmosphere. Broly looked at his palm before closing it to a fist. He turned around and looked at the Scions waiting for his orders. Everyone, I have gathered you here for a war, but I have to disappoint you. This will be a subjugation. Capture them alive. 
Ahu! The crowd screamed at the same time and stormed the entrance en masse. Jain, Kana and Alia sighed out in relief, while Taro and Aze were expressionless. Zhangya frowned but didn't say anything. Des suddenly approached him. Are you sure about this? Even if we spare them and try to show them our goodwill, they will be out for blood in the future. They will only see us as invaders, who robbed them from their planet. They will definitely want revenge. But I am not doing this for them. I am doing it for our future. What do you mean? I have thought about it. Many of our soldiers are still accustomed to our ways from planet Vegeta. When conquering a planet, they would completely level the civilization to the ground. They indiscriminately killed everyone and then just sold the planet, but as Aaliyah said we would revert to what we used to be. It would only take us as far as we used to be. So, these natives will be perfect subjects to test how to administer another race. You mean, that seemed to come to a realization. Yes, we will need experience on how to govern another race, not how to kill them. If I want to conquer the whole universe, I can't just kill them all. I need many forces to help me. Des, I don't want to sell planets. A planet without life is useless to me. I want to rule these planets, govern them. But this will only bring us trouble, especially those elves. They will rebel against us. Oh, of course, but we would only learn from it and if we want to rule other races, we will be prepared. Besides, they aren't really able to threaten us, at least not after we killed their elites. Now that I think about it, it's better to have our first attempt in governing to be a difficult race to handle. As in the future we have city lords all over the universe. We can't rule with force alone. Such an empire would only crumble with time. Now that we are still off the radar, we can gather some experience. I hope you are right. Des, I want you to create some files, who you would think are fit to govern a race and bring them to me. Sigh. Understood, my majesty. Broly then turned to the other super scions. I want you to protect them. If there are too strong opponents for them to handle, do it yourself. I will be going for their leader. The group quickly flew out to the base and helped the scions. Zhangya approached him before he flew out himself. Broly, you want to establish a universal empire? Didn't know you were this ambitious. There is just something about science and conquering. Don't lose yourself in it. Power and greed are easy to fall into but hard to come out from. You don't have to conquer the universe or even one more planet. A single planet would be enough for your race to live on. Exactly, I am not doing it because I have to but because I want to. Heroes don't have to save the galaxy as long as they stay on their planet. It is unlikely that they will have a problem with entities on galaxy level, but they still do it because of their beliefs. I don't want to be a hero. I want to be the strongest conqueror that has ever existed. Talking about ambitious. Well, I guess you can call me lucky to be on your side. Alright enough talking let's do this. After saying that Broly and Zhangya flew towards the entrance, where they could already see numerous elvish looking soldiers bound or knocked out. There were some areas that were burning but nothing out of the boundary. There was a squad stationed in the entrance looking over their captives. As soon as they saw Broly approach, they saluted. Broly went inside and saw their underground base. It was a giant plane hall. A few scions were still fighting with some soldiers but defeated them quickly. With a quick look, Broly saw at least 200 elves captured. He sensed the strongest life force and quickly headed there. It didn't take him long through the numerous tunnels to get out as he entered a valley. Only a small hole in the ceiling led outside from this valley and showed the stars outside. A valley underground it was quite beautiful. As he looked around, he saw the battle in the distance. He quickly flew towards it with Zhangya in tow. As Broly approached the group who were having a battle, he saw that some natives were personally suppressed by Aes and Taro. Their opponents were stronger than the average Scion, but they were nowhere near enough for the two Scions to go Super Scion too. Hey Aes, where are the others? He asked while the other was still fighting. King Broly, they went further to the north, there seemed to be a barrier around a castle. I went to investigate and subjugate the guards still outside. I see. When you are done here gather every single one of them in the castle after I have conquered it. For now, I want you two here and make sure that they don't escape. Understood. A saluted. Broly and Zhangya left the two behind. Could you be any more stiff? Taro mocked A's. I am a soldier, maybe you should act as one as well. Well, we are his friends, so I don't worry about it. Yeah? Why didn't you say anything then? Cough. He seemed busy right now. Oh man, he just gives off this vibe right now. Then his aim was probably reached. He needs to show this kind of bearing. Although he is our friend, he is our king. Don't forget that. I know. Aze looked at Taro who fell silent. 
I think you shouldn't call him king though if you don't want to. We have already built enough respect from the other scions. It wouldn't be weird if we are more personally with Broly. Besides you always grimace when you say something you don't want to. It looks stupid. Hey! HM? So that is the barrier they were talking about. Broly said as he looked at the pale green sphere around a medieval castle on a small hill. There were houses around the barrier at the foot of the hill or rather carved out trees. It was easy for the scions to round them up. Most of those inside the trees were weak civilians. There was only one figure hovering in front of the barrier. Broly approached Kana who was observing the barrier. Broly stopped beside her. How is it? Aren't you able to break through? Kana looked at him and smiled teasingly before she bends her knee while bowing her head, giving him a curtsy. My king, the barrier is difficult to break through. It would take me at least 20 minutes to break through. Way too exhausting, you do it. You only need like a second. So good luck. Broly raised his eyebrow at the way she talked to him. You don't seem disturbed by my aura. PSSHH, don't you realize that you sometimes release that aura in bed? When you pick up the speed. You give off this manly aura like you want to dominate everything around you. It is really arousing. She approached him and caressed his inner thigh, teasingly staring at him. We have a war to wage, concentrate. All right, then go ahead and break the barrier. Broly was speechless but was more so happy that she was unaffected. He hadn't realized that he sometimes used it unconsciously. Maybe he should be more aware of it in the future. After all, he was using the technique he learned back on Perdidus to release his aura but he thought this shouldn't normally be his go-to. The aura is used to intimidate one's opponent, affect their emotions it shouldn't be his way to rule, or in bed. He only did it intentionally now since the other scions haven't seen him in action. They may have heard of his actions of eliminating the seas, but beside Kana no one was there to witness it. He did show his legendary state at the coronation, but it was only for a moment and shouldn't be as rememberable as a fight or another showcase of his destructive power. It was not like he believed that they would intentionally ignore his order, but they were in a blood-boiling fight right now. It would be easy for them to lose themselves in the fight. If they didn't follow his orders, he would make an example out of that scion, but he couldn't afford to lose his already few scion subordinates. Instead he used his aura to intimidate those around him and remind him of what he was capable of and that he wasn't to be messed with. As he looked and analyzed the barrier, he found out that he couldn't sense ki nor life force through it but magic power. To be precise, the whole barrier was created through magic. Magic has many different uses like mind control or paralyzing. Protection barrier powered by magic were also very strong. Even someone like Babidi in the series was able to hold on for a few moments against Piccolo. Without thinking further Broly's size increased a bit. His muscles expanded slightly, and his hair changed golden. He opened his blue-greenish eyes and stared at the barrier in front of him. He held his right hand upwards and a spear seemed to manifest itself from thin air, starting from the middle. The spear glowed green and the spearhead in particular was shining brightly. Green lightning appeared around Broly while holding his spear. He looked like a thunder god about to judge a mortal. Bluish lightning lines appeared on the spear as Broly inputted magic power. Its strength by now was a complete overkill for this barrier and Broly knew it. With a calamity like atmosphere surrounding Broly, it quickly attracted everyone's attention. Thunder Spear. He was grinning as he threw the spear at the barrier. It seemed to tear through space and time as it left behind a green-bluish line of light. It instantly reached and penetrated the barrier. With loud pop and glass-shattering clinker, the barrier fell apart. As the barrier was falling apart, every other person was staring with wide eyes. The natives knew of the prowess of that barrier. It had sustained hundreds of years without anyone able to break it after being activated. That was also why they had moved here after the last invasion. It was a sanctuary and their last line of defense. Now it was easily broken, and the natives immediately understood the might of the frightening figure hovering in the air. If that figure wanted all of the people outside of the barrier dead, he wouldn't even need half of the energy he used to break the barrier. All present had the scene of a godlike figure throwing his lightning spear at the barrier burned into their scalps. A moment they wouldn't forget. The scions were stunned as well. They had seen Aes and Taro in action several times. But this was something on a completely different scale. Many were ecstatic that they had such a powerful king, but more were just glad not to be his enemy. Broly landed inside the castle and with a look he destroyed the gate. Although they could all fly over the gate, it was more of a symbolic action. Their gates of their sanctuary were single-handedly opened by the enemies. 
nothing could now stop them from going in. Broly walked down the main path towards the main building at the end. Soldiers suddenly stormed out of the door from the side buildings. Broly instantly sensed that those were the strongest soldiers the natives had left. Their last line of defense. Broly just kept walking through the crowd of soldiers. Although they, the Royal Guard, were the strongest soldiers, this was only as an average. Compared to the elite squad, they were still far behind. They were cowering as they pointed their weapons at him and showed fake courage. In the end, no one dared to attack him. They knew that they wouldn't be able to last a fraction of a second against him. Every single casual attack from him would be able to decimate them. As Broly walked past them, they broke out in cold sweat and their legs gave in. A two-meter-tall man with a cross scar across his face and bulging muscles standing at the far back was screaming at them to attack. But no one listened to him. Through the armor he wore, it was obvious that this person was a general, but no one cared about him now. Fine. I will do it myself. Hiya. The general gripped his spear and stomped the ground, shooting straight Broly. He quickly arrived in front of Broly, and with his momentum he thrust his spear forward. His spear was covered in white key as it shot through the air. Snap. The spear instantly snapped in half. It wasn't able to leave a single scratch on Broly's chest. Impossible. Before he could retreat, his head was grabbed by Broly. The general futilely tried to pull himself away as he was raised into the air, but it was already too late. In an instant, a cracking sound was heard as his head was crushed. The general's body became limp as blood spewed onto the ground. Broly threw away the body to the side onto the soldier who were watching in horror. They didn't even dare to move the body away as they looked at Broly walking undisturbed through the crowd. The blood on his hand, the few drops of blood on his face and this terrifying grin on his face made the soldier only think of one thing. One does not simply attack a king. Broly's low voice boomed through the streets. This is the devil. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much and it keeps me going. Plus, it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.